Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Accesi suprememastertv.com barra schedule. Hamare karkam pesh kye jate kai bha shame krupya deke suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Woman de jemu ti kong tu jung yu yen, chin kan suprememastertv.com xie xian schedule. Ranjangan kami menawakan banyak bahasa. Sila kunjungi suprememastertv.com slash kataban schedule. Barame junama tu ofira العديد من اللغات يرجى زيارة suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. ناشا برنامج بيتلاقيت منوكا يا زيكو. بجالوستا بس ماتفيتي suprememastertv.com كاساي شرطة schedule. Acara kami menyediakan banyak bahasa. Silakan lihat suprememastertv.com garis miring schedule. Many things the Buddha taught because Ananda asked. Yeah. So he has a great compassion also, yes. If Ananda did not ask, we would not have all this. Maybe Buddha did not think about it. And if Ananda did not ask on behalf of the mothers of Buddha, then we would not have any nuns, Buddhist nuns nowadays. Please continue watching to find out more. Supreme Master Chun Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic. Our Laksis, also known as Vietnamese, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. ดีใจที่ได้พบคุณผู้ชมที่มีเมตตาฉันชื่อธรรมรัตน์จากกรุงเทพในประเทศไทยที่มีอัธยาศัยดีผู้คนของเรามีความสุขในการฉลองการดำรงอยู่ที่มีค่าของคุณประเทศไทยเป็นประเทศที่เต็มไปด้วยสิ่งมหัศจรรย์และความลึกลับบริเวณที่ราบสูงที่น่าหลงไหลในภาคเหนือได้รับพระพรด้วยบริเวณป่าอันบริสุทธิ์ที่ใหญ่โตและน้ำตกที่ดึงดูดใจขณะที่ทิวทัศน์ทะเลอันน่าทึ่งทางใต้มีหาดทรายที่ยืดออกไปไม่รู้จบท่ามกลางหมู่เกาะหลายร้อยแห่งภูเก็ตและพัทยาเป็นที่นิยมสำหรับวันหยุดพักผ่อนของครอบครัวและแน่นอนเมืองที่มีชีวิตชีวาของกรุงเทพเต็มไปด้วยการผจญภัยประเทศไทยมีชื่อเสียงสำหรับความอุดมสมบูรณ์ของผลไม้เขตร้อนและเครื่องเทศหอมนอกจากนี้ยังเป็นผู้ส่งออกข้าวรายใหญ่ที่สุดของโลกที่ส่งออกมากกว่า11ล้านตันในปี2018ในฐานะประเทศพุทธศาลเจ้าและวัดน้ำไม่ท่วนปกป้องประเทศและมอบสันติสุขให้คนไทยที่อัธยาศัยดีและเอื้อเฟื้อเผื่อแผ่เรามีความสุขมากในการแนะนำประเทศไทยที่น่าอัศจรรย์ให้คุณอย่างสั้นผู้ชมที่ยอดเยี่ยมเราอธิษฐานให้สวรรค์ประทานความรักที่ไม่มีเงื่อนไขและความสุขที่ไร้ขอบเขตแด่คุณกว่า
สามทศวรรษท่านอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่ได้ทําให้โลกของเราสว่างสวัยด้วยคําสอนจากสวรรค์ของท่านอาจารย์ผู้รู้แจ้งอย่างสมบูรณ์ท่านถ่ายทอดการทําสมาธิวิถีกวนอิมสู่กลุ่มคนที่ปรารถนาที่จะค้นพบธรรมชาติของพระเจ้าภายในในทันทีและเพื่อบรรลุหลุดพ้นจากสังสารวัตชั่วนิรันดร์ในชาติเดียววิถีกวนอิมเป็นที่ปฏิบัติกันโดยอาจารย์ผู้รู้แจ้งทุกพระองค์อาทิเช่นพระพุทธเจ้าขงจื้อกูรูนานักพระเยซูคิดเล่าจื้อพระกิษณะพระมหาวีระพระศาสดาโมฮัมหมัดขอสันติสุขจงมีแด่ท่านและท่านอื่นๆอีกมากมายท่านเน้นย้ำว่าถ้าเราจดจำพระเจ้าเสมอรับใช้ผู้อื่นอย่างไรตัวตนและทำตามกฎจักรวาลเราจะเข้าถึงศักยภาพสูงสุดของมนุษย์และจะเข้าใจจุดมุ่งหมายของเราบนโลกอย่างแท้จริงท่านอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่เป็นตัวอย่างพิเศษที่ยังคงอยู่ของความเมตตาท่านส่งความช่วยเหลือด้านวัตถุและการเงินและความรักอยู่เสมอให้กับผู้ริภัยผู้ไร้บ้านเหยื่อภัยพิบัติทางธรรมชาติและงานบรรเทาทุกอื่นๆที่จําเป็นท่านอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่ได้ขอบคุณอย่างลึกซึ้งต่อพระเจ้าอันเป็นที่รักสําหรับความช่วยเหลือทางการเงินความสะดวกสบายและการสนับสนุนแก่ผู้ที่เดือดร้อนและจำเป็นและหรือเพื่อเหตุที่ดีใดๆมานานนับปีในฐานะเป็นเรือที่ต่ำต้อยสำหรับเฮียคำศัพท์เป็นกลางสำหรับ his her ความเมตตาและความรักต่อลูกๆที่มีค่าของพระองค์ท่านอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่ขอบคุณทุกท่านด้วยความเคารพบุคคลพิเศษองค์กรต่างๆบรรดาผู้นาและรัฐบาลต่างๆสำหรับความจริงใจทั้งหมดของท่านความรักการสนับสนุนอย่างต่อเนื่องขอให้สวรรค์อวยพรท่านตลอดชั่วนิรันดรพวกเราสมาชิกสมาคมอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่นานาชาติใครขอขอบคุณยิ่งอย่างจริงใจสำหรับความมีน้ำใจของท่านขออวยพรให้ท่านได้รับสิ่งที่ดีที่สุดท่านอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่ได้รับการสนับสนุนและความรักจากองค์กรต่างๆสื่อรัฐบาลและบุคคลต่างๆเช่นเดียวกับรางวัลมากมายจากพวกเขาอาทิเช่นรางวัลสันติภาพกุซซี่ปี2006และได้รับการพิจารณาเข้ารับรางวัลโนเบลสาขาสันติภาพแห่งตะวันออกรางวัลผู้นำจิตวิญญาณโลกในปี1994รางวัลมหาวีในปี2008วันที่22กุมภาพันธ์และ25ตุลาคมทั้งสองวันถูกประกาศว่าเป็นวันอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่พลเมืองกิติมศักดิ์ของสหรัฐอเมริกาและอื่นๆและได้รับเกียรติตลอดหลายปีที่ผ่านมาด้วยรางวัลอื่นๆมากมายและรางวัลสำหรับการกระทำที่ใจบุญมีมนุษยธรรมอันโดดเด่นของท่าน
เราต้องขออภัยที่ไม่สามารถออกอากาศรางวัลและเกียรติยศอื่นๆอีกมากเนื่องจากไม่มีพื้นที่และเวลาท่านอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่ขอบคุณทุกท่านด้วยความเคารพบุคคลพิเศษองค์กรต่างๆบรรดาผู้นําและรัฐบาลต่างๆสําหรับความจริงใจทั้งหมดของท่านความรักการสนับสนุนอย่างต่อเนื่องขอให้สวรรค์อวยพรท่านตลอดชั่วนิรันดรพวกเราสมาชิกสมาคมอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่นานาชาติใครขอขอบคุณยิ่งอย่างจริงใจสําหรับความมีน้ําใจของท่านขออวยพรให้ท่านได้รับสิ่งที่ดีที่สุดอย่างที่แท้จริงสําหรับเพื่อนสัตว์ที่งดงามของเราท่านอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่ส่งเสริมการทานอาหารจากพืชที่สงบสุขและเปลี่ยนด้วยรักและจินตนาการว่ามวลมนุษยชาติตื่นขึ้นรับรู้ถึงความศักดิ์สิทธิ์ของทุกชีวิตโลกทั้งโลกเป็นวีแกนที่สงบสุขและรุ่งโรจน์เป็นโลกที่สัตว์และคนใช้ชีวิตด้วยความปลองดองผาสุขการริเริ่มเพื่อเผยแผ่แนวทางวีแกนของท่านมีหลากหลายรวมถึงการแจกใบปลิวทางเลือกใหม่ในการดำรงชีวิตพัตตาคารอาหารวีแกนนานาชาติเลอร์วิงฮัตบริษัทผลิตภัณฑ์อาหารวีแกนผลิตภัณฑ์ขนสัตว์วีแกนโพรทัสสุพรีมาสเตอร์และการพูดคุยกับรัฐบาลและผู้นำสื่อที่มีอิทธิพลอยู่เป็นประจำและการเข้าร่วมการประชุมที่มีถ่ายทอดทางโทรทัศน์เรื่องอากาศเปลี่ยนแปลงและอื่นๆไม่ว่าเราจะรับรู้มันหรือไม่ความพยายามของท่านมีอิทธิพลอย่างมากต่อความตื่นตัวทั่วโลกเกี่ยวกับวิถีชีวิตที่เป็นมิตรกับสัตว์และหนทางแห่งเมตตานี้สามารถนำสันติสุขถาวรมาสู่ประเทศต่างๆในขณะที่ปกป้องโลกของเราจากการเปลี่ยนแปลงภูมิอากาศและภัยพิบัติท่านอนุตราจารย์ชิงไห่ได้เดินทางทั่วโลกนานหลายปีตั้งแต่ทวีปอเมริกาถึงแอฟริกาจากยุโรปถึงโอเชเนียและจัดปาทากถาหลายร้อยครั้งกับสาธารณาชนและลูกศิษย์ของท่านในหัวข้อทางจิตวิญญาณต่างๆหลากหลายหัวข้อวันนี้เราได้รับพระพรที่จะนำเสนอการบรรยายธรรมที่ลึกซึ้งเรื่องหนึ่งชื่อว่าพระสูรางคามสูตรสภาวะถูกครอบงำของสังขารขันตอนที่หนึ่งของแปดตอนในระหว่างอาจารย์และลูกศิษย์ให้ไว้ในภาษาอังกฤษในวันที่28ธันวาคม2018厨房呢？厨房人呢？啊、oh, okay. ，谢谢。啊，你带过去厨房。举手，厨房，厨房，举 ，OK，OK，、okay. okay, 他们的，给他们，还有给他们。OK， 谢谢大家哈。我要谢谢你们而已 ，OK。我要你们<笑> ，Thank you 啦、嗯。我本来要你们坐最前面那里嘛，我一进来就马上就自己丢给你们，放给你们，好玩嘛。然后他们说你们在这里，我认为在前面，结果也是在后面，<笑>对不起了啊。好，没关系。我信还是一样感恩大家，主访人员 ，OK 哈、huh? yeah. ，Thank you。煮<笑>给极尽人尝不容易哈， huh? 每天你们煮的好好啊，我不知道你们怎么弄的，不过做的好好，好像神通广大啊，<笑>好，很很很壮。
。Thank you <笑>。啊，谢谢大家。嗯，辛苦。嗯，厨房人员是好像最辛苦的，懂不懂？哇，洗啊、擦啊、弄啊，就不停啊，啊，不能停，多人嘛。啊，不过大家都吃得饱吗？ Yes? yes. None of you. Umbre? No. <laughs> Hungry? No. <laughs> okay. You understand, huh? Spanish. Oh man, yes. <laughs> Lucky you all intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. I just do umbre. You know everything. <laughs> you understand what it means. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if the system here is working well. I tell them to try their best. Okay, if not, then we just go to Sihu nearby. Huh? It's in same province. Yeah, Sihu is you don't have this building, but you have a, a warm, warm kind of tent, a big tent, and then you put your tent inside. Double, <laughs> warm. <laughs> yeah, same with me. I have an inside tent and outside there also. I put some curtain. You know, on the on the the edge of the wherever you know some structure, I cannot nail anything. Some, but I cannot nail them all because they are iron. So what I do, I open a little door, you know, and then I knot the the how you say, the string. I knot it too big, and then I shut the door so <laughs> and lock it. So the string from this side of the door. Uh, also the same side in the other door, and they and they hold they hold it. There's no nail. I just put, you know, in between the door and the door frame, and then I close it. And then I, lucky I brought some of these uh, pin stuff, you know, the safety pin. Uh, I brought a lot of things, even my hammer, my <laughs> screwdriver, my plier, you know, yeah, and some nails, and some hook. It just don't work here. <laughs> and uh, some string, you know, <laughs> and then <laughs> I hang some curtain, you know, so some piece of of cloth that I found, yeah, because up there it's very windy. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, when I'm inside the tent, it's okay. Just when I walk around, everything just flying, you know, cups and <laughs> box. Uh, uh, so I just uh, hang some curtain, just stop some wind. But it doesn't really stop, so I push whatever table or chair you know against the wall, and it holds the curtain somehow. And you gotta use your IQ, huh? <laughs> I prefer that, you know, than in the room. Well, I I preferred the room before, <laughs> but since it's it's not very uh, clean yet at the moment. I mean, spiritually, so I go to the roof, yeah, in a tent. I like it there. It's okay. There's no feeling of discomfort or complaint. Nothing. It's just wonderful to have a tent. In the Himalaya or in India before, I don't even have a tent. Yeah, I just have a sleeping bag and an umbrella. <laughs> that is my tent. Yeah, when it rains, I just sit, you know, close it together and the umbrella on top. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe heaven feels sorry. So when I was there, it's not much raining. And uh, when I went to Kashmir, it's it's only uh, like a, a mist, you know, mist, and it's not much. So I put the umbrella where my face is and my head, and it's okay. Therefore, I feel the ten here is a heaven already. Yeah. <laughs> Even if I could afford a tent, I could not carry all that, you know, all the way in walking. In the Himalaya Trail, they don't have any car, only horses, and uh, you probably have to order long in advance, yes. It's, I don't see many horses either. And even if there are horses, I don't think I have a, a, a heart to sit on it, because some horses, you know, they don't have shoes on their thing and their broken nails and all that. Oh. And the, the, the people who carry luggage also as a laborer, they also don't have uh, good shoes, you know, those plastic kind of flip-flops, a broken half already. Oh, my God. 
I was complaining to God. I said, if these people, they're working for you, why don't I see any of your loving comfort in action? Why do they have to walk on the slippery ice with the half-broken flip-flop thing like that and carrying burden on their shoulders, you know? Uh, I went to the Himalaya, you know, the more I went up, the more I don't feel like... <laughs> I was very rebellious at that time. I was thinking, why well, God doesn't take care of them. Just like you, yeah? Uh, everything we blame God. You know? <laughs> we forgot the karma, yes. And then when I went on the way to the pilgrim road to Himalaya, to the Ganges uh, source, you know? Gango tree, Gamuk, and all that. Uh, I met one monk, you know, he Hindu monk. He sat on the roadside with just only one plastic sheet on top as a roof, yeah? There's no wall, just, they just put um, uh, uh, like a bamboo pole or some wood pole in the middle and then it's like that, <laughs> nothing else. And then, but he has a fire in the middle. Uh, in, in his tent. <laughs> and then I complained to him. I say, how come people went all the way from the plane far away, walking distance? Yeah, why God doesn't take care of them? They come here to worship God in their heart. How come they're so poor and <laughs> so working so laborious in such a condition like that? You know, the ice block is slippery, huh? It's not just snow. Some part is just pure ice, you know, very glad and very slippery. That is where danger lies, you know? Yeah. I'm so worried about the horse. Sometimes he cannot grip the ice and it's just staggering around. And my heart uh, pain so much. And I was really, really... Uh, Sorry, I was feeling bad about God at that time. <laughs> yeah, and so I complained to the monk, yeah, and he enlightened me. He said, you don't know. These people are special. Me, he mean the laborer. Of course, the one who they carry on the back or, or the sitting on the horse, he don't mean those people. He mean the horses and the laborers who carry these uh, bags. They are special gods. They came to help, to help this pilgrim. Oh, he's so positive. <laughs> I just have to say, oh, perhaps so. <laughs> Maybe you're more enlightened than I am. Well, thank you. I feel better afterward. I apologize to God. I say, Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but I, it still pains me. Yeah. It still pains my heart. Whenever I see any suffering, no matter where and how and why, I always feel pain, yes. It really gives me also physical heart pain, and not just talking about it, yeah? I'm just too sensitive for this world. I don't know how I survive all this time. <laughs> and that there was, there was one of the reasons why I left home, yeah, because too many suffering on TV, yeah? And you can't just sit there and hold the husband's hands and watch all this news and feel in nothing. And that's the way I was, yeah? And then finally, it sank into your heart, and then you just don't want to enjoy that anymore. You just want to find something more substantial, more real, you know, in order. If, if you don't, could not help anyone, at least you understand why the world is so suffering. At that time, I did not understand why. I want to know why and how we can avoid it, okay? I did not think that maybe I could help anybody yet, but I really just want to search for something, something better than just sitting in front of TV holding my husband's hand and, you know, snatching some snacks and enjoying this and that or even the news, yeah. That is the first ever reason why I wanted to leave home. Okay, well, I hope you guys are better today. <laughs> I see less of these masks. Are you feeling better? Yes? yes. yes. yes.
，有没有翻译？好，今天什么都比较好。We should really thank the past masters, monks, and nuns and scholars who have take time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and nirvana, and also for the past and present. Persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health, or under any difficult situation, to translate this, so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them, and may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present, and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten direction, all respectfully. Before you read it, okay, and then you cover the sutra also with silk or you know beautiful cloth, and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say if I done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least. Other people they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. So yesterday we were reading. The Buddha was uh, kind of uh, requesting his disciples and the Bodhisattvas to try their best to protect all beings. Yeah, but he said in the Dharma ending age. After my nirvana, all of you should pass on the Tathagata teachings, so that all living beings can awaken to their meaning. Do not let the demons of the heavens have their way. Offer protection so that all can realize the unsurpassed way. It is like this. The Buddha knew after his nirvana, there will be somebody or anybody or a lot of body come up. You know. Uh, maybe just uh, wearing the monk robes, or maybe just pretend to be Vimalakirti number second or number third, and teaching people the Buddha's teaching without understanding anything. Maybe just read, 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 and uh, somehow maybe uh, enter some samadhi and then talk nonsense. Yeah, or leading people into a bad way, just like the way we discussed yesterday with this uh, physical lust. Yeah, okay. So the Buddha knew that. Mm. Uh, after, it is funny. After any master died, they just try to copy it. Yeah, not his own direct disciples or a descendant of disciple. It's just that anybody, you know, jump in and thinking, oh, it's easy to be a monk just wear the yellow robe. Yeah, <laughs> they don't know the monk life is true life is very very ascetic. Yeah, take a lot of courage and discipline. Yeah. And you, you cannot just still eat meat, drink wine, and profess that you are a monk, yeah, something like that. But the the later generations, the descendants of the descendants of descendants, they didn't have no idea, no clue. And just as many other people outside in the world, they have ambitions, yeah. They want to be rich. They want to be famous. They want to be worshipped. You know, thing like that. So they just take up Buddha's teaching or Jesus' teaching, or whatever teaching of the masters, and become that, and then blah blah on, and then make trouble for people. Not only make trouble for themselves by creating bad karma, and they will go to hell. I mean, non-stop hell and forever hell. But they even mislead others to fall into these hells. The Buddha is so compassionate. He already foresee the the future of harm that may be before all the innocent beings, and he won't be there to help them. 
It is like that. So you can see many different religious uh, order people copy the masters, yeah, and doing all kind of, of ritual and all kind of uh, ways, you know, just to entrap people in there and making them busy with just ritual, uh, useless, all kind of useless thing, wasting their time and obstructing them to find the real master to be liberated. So the Buddha say that. The reason he tell all this, we also have to thank uh, the Reverend Bodhisattva Haiso Ananda also for asking the Buddha. Yeah, we have to thank him. We thank you <laughs> very much. <laughs> Many things the Buddha taught because Ananda asked. Yeah. So he has a great compassion also. Yes. If Ananda did not ask, we would not have all this. Maybe Buddha did not think about it. Yeah. Uh, and if Ananda did not ask on behalf of the mothers of uh, Buddha, then we would not have any nuns, Buddhist nuns nowadays. Yeah? Okay. Who knows, maybe one of the Buddha's nuns have become enlightened and continue teaching, you know, a lot of other people there after Buddha's Nirvana or during Buddha Nirvana. Yeah, there were some nuns who were very enlightened and have helped some of uh, other who come afterward yeah, to be enlightened as well. If there was not that nun who explained all her own life and her experience to the newcomer, there will there wouldn't be so many other nuns who come and practice and know the Buddha's way. So it's very good. So Ananda is very great, <laughs> great Bodhisattva. Even though he play his humble role as a Buddha, uh, and not know too much <laughs> assistant, but he truly possess the great love of the Bodhisattva of a great saint. You should know, Buddha or Bodhisattva don't always appear great or sitting on a high chair to talk to people. They do many different ways to, to lead different sentient beings. Even the Buddha say you, you have to be even a butcher and prostitute so that you can lead, do the same like them so that you can befriend them, then you can tell them. Yeah. Maybe visibly, maybe invisibly. Huh? Oh my God. There's no end to what the Bodhisattva and the Buddha is doing. And then the ascension beings is still so blind and groveling in darkness. Isn't that frustrating? All because of Maya. Hmm? Maya. It's too much test to pass. <laughs> and not many can pass. <laughs> that is the problem. If you can pass, okay, but look like, you know, so difficult, difficult. Some people meditate by themselves or enlighten themselves, and they become Patekya Buddha, you know, they enlighten alone by themselves. But that was because they have past life seat of enlightenment already. But some people, anyone just jump in and uh, meditate and uh, read in the Buddha Sutra and proclaim that he is already a saint. This is a thing very, very dangerous to, to many people, hmm. not just to himself, but to many people. So be careful what you say, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell me anymore that you are seven, six, eight level and all that nonsense. All I hope is that you liberate it. Listen to me and don't do anything wrong so that I can fish you up quick. That's all I hope for, really. I don't expect any of you become anything big. If you can, wow, I'll be very proud and happy, but I don't dare to expect a lot, okay? Just <laughs> meditate, be good. <laughs> But who knows, you, you can be Buddha, you know? Not that you cannot, just I don't dare <laughs> to expect less that I will be very 
disappointed, né? And then boost your ego as well, and that is the thing I want to avoid, okay? Okay, we continue now. Ananda, when a good person who is cultivating samadhi has put an end to the feeling skanda, I mean, he, he knows already the emotion or this mental desire or ambition could cause trouble and make you see many things, or feel many things. So he already stamped an end on it already. I mean, he's higher level already. He stopped listening or seeing all this kind of nonsensical which arise from our senses, yeah, and the mental or psychic, everything. Then, although he has not achieved, still not achieved freedom, <laughs> you know how many states already we passed through, <laughs> 16, 15 already, yeah? But he still not achieved freedom from our flows, means he has not completely been 100% pure. His mind can leave his body the way a bird escapes from a cage, even though he has not been liberated. From within his ordinary body, he already has the potential for ascending through the Bodhisattva's 60 levels of sagehood. Wow. He attains the body produced by intent. Ananda, when the good person who is cultivating samadhi has put an end to the feeling skanda, even though he's not achieved freedom from outlaws, means he still has defects, mistakes. But his mind can leave his body the way a bird escapes from a case, meaning he can always uh, go in samadhi and, and leave his body. From within his ordinary body, he already has the potential for ascending through the Bodhisattva 60 levels of sagehood. He attains the, quote, body produced by intent, end quote, and can roam freely without obstructions. This is like someone talking in his sleep, although he does not know he is doing it. His words are clear, and his voice and inflection are all in order. So those who are awake can understand what he is saying. This is the region of the thinking skanda. He left the feeling skanda region and the uh, form skanda region, but he entered another skanda region. It's called thinking skanda. Okay, continue. If he puts an end to his steering thoughts and rids himself of superfluous thinking, it is as if he has purged defilement from the enlightened understanding mind. Then he is perfectly clear about the births and deaths of all categories of beings from beginning to end. This is the end of the thinking skanda. He can then transcend the turbidity of afflictions, contemplating the cause of the thinking skanda. One sees that interconnected false thoughts are its source. He, he will know that now. Or some, someone who is more enlightened than him sees that the interconnected false you know, incorrect thoughts are its source. Ananda, in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone, this good person is untroubled by any deviant mental state and experiences perfect, bright concentration. Within samadhi, his mind craves its perfect brightness, so he sharpens his concentrated thought as he greedily seeks for cleverness and skill. At that time, a demon from the heavens sees the opportunity it has been waiting for. He can uh, go through 60... <laughs> state of enlightenment 
and still get the demons trap. Each spirit possess, possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to expound the sutras and the teachings. This person, unaware that he is possessed by a demon, claims he has reached unsurpassed nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks cleverness and skill, he arranges a seat and explains the teachings. In an instant, he may appear to be a bhikkhu, enabling that person to see him as such, or he may appear as a chakra, I mean the god, one of the heaven god of the 33 heavens, or as a woman, or as a bhikshuni, I mean a nun, or his body may emit light as he sleeps in a dark room. Okay, so this is not the person who is just practicing, but the demon possess somebody else and then appear to this cultivator uh, in meditation or normally, and then appear like he's a bodhisattva or a monk and nuns and so telling him things, yes? Because this one, uh, the ghost or the demon, of course, has some power. So when he sleeps, he even emits lights and all that. So other people would think, wow, you know, must be a saint. It happened. Yeah, some people have that before. Before here, not here. In Taiwan, yes. Somebody uh, sleep and don't have electricity, but then the room is brightened. The good person, meaning the one that has been uh, uh, seeking cleverness and skill, yeah, well, well, meditating, the good person is beguiled and fooled into thinking that the other is a bodhisattva, the one who emits light <laughs> when sleep in dark room. Yeah. He believes the other's teachings and his mind is swayed. He breaks the so his mind became misled, you know, yeah, because he believed in this demon who possessed another person and emit light and talk, uh, dharma and all that stuff. Yeah, emit light in a dark room, eh? <laughs> yeah. We would all think that that person must be a saint, right? If we saw that ourselves or oh, something extraordinary. Yeah, many people believe that. Some in Taiwan, yeah, happening. <laughs> it happened. I don't know if it's still happening, but it happened. And people believe a lot in that person. So the, the person who meditates and passed through so many stages already still seek cleverness and skill. So this good person have been preached by the demons possessed person. And now he think that that person who is possessed by by demon is a bodhisattva, I mean a saint. Therefore, uh, this so-called bodhisattva was preaching to him, and then he believed it. So his mind waver. So he breaks the Buddha's moral precepts. Oh, that's bad. Not just misled, but break the precepts, and covertly indulges in his greedy desires, many desires. Whatever he desire, he he fulfills it. He indulged in it. So, the other person is fond of speaking about calamities, auspicious events, and unusual changes. He may say that a Tathagata has appeared in the world at a certain place. He may speak of catastrophic fires or wars, thus frightening people into squandering their family wealth without reason. This is a strange ghost that in its old age has become a demon. It disturbs and confuses the good person, but when it tires of doing so, it will leave the other person's body, then both the disciples and the teacher will get into trouble with the law. When the demon okay, possess another person, not the meditator, yeah, the sick, cleverness and skill. 
but a demon possessed another person, okay, a third person. And then he came and teach this meditator who seek cleverness and skill. And he preach a lot of things and talk about so many things, and uh, many people believe him, follow him. And this uh, ghost or this demon child of the game, he left. And then the, the person who was possessed before became nothing. And the so-called disciple, the meditator, also became, both of them became nothing again. Or sucked up the energies and strength and power and faith or whatever, and they continue to do bad things because the so-called master taught him that. Both of them continue to do bad things. But without the power of protection of that demon, they both will be caught by the law. Maybe before, when that uh, demon is still there, he will kind of uh, ward off any power that comes. But after the demon left, then they still continue to do bad things, you know, with their desires. Then the, the government will catch them. You, uh, Ananda, huh? Buddha continued, you should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will fall into the relentless hells. <sighs> There's some more. My God. Meditation is not all that safe if you don't know how. Huh? Guan Yin is the safest already, unless you still go and <laughs> mess up with uh, local ghosts and stuff like that in those small, small, sometimes local people make some local thing to worship some local god. And if you come worship them, sometimes they possess you if they like you. And then if you seek other uh, higher dimension by another master, they will make you trouble like the one who asked yesterday. In case you have that trouble, in case you have come and worship some lower god, some deity somewhere, and they possess you, then just say that I'm a disciple of Supreme Master Ching Hai. If you leave me alone, she might be able to help you to elevate your status. If you continue to harm me, then even if I'm harmed, you will not be any good. Yeah? So you leave me alone and I practice, I can share some of the merit with you. And I my, pray to my master to help you, okay? Then they will stop giving you headaches. Uh, do not uh, despise them or anything. Just say thank you for helping me all this time, or being with me somehow. Help me in any small way, but I want to study with Master Ching Hai. Yeah? Just leave me alone and you'll be benefited. Huh? better than harming me. So further, Ananda, the Buddha say, in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone, this good person is untroubled by any deviant mental state and experiences perfect, bright concentration. Within samadhi, his mind craves to roam about, so he lets his subtle thoughts fly out as he greedily seeks for adventure, still have ambition, still have not stopped. At that time, a demon from the heavens sees the opportunity it has been waiting for. Its spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to expound the sutras and explain the teachings. Of course, he cannot explain well. It's just because somebody don't understand, don't know, so whatever, you know, stalking will do. The evidence abounds. Yeah, you can see everywhere people go and preach and talk, repeat the sutra, repeat in the, in the Bibles or any others of uh, past master teachings even though they don't understand or they just <laughs> explain nonsense, a lot of people come and follow, yeah? offering all kind of possession, money, and worshiping them. You can see it huh? all over the world. Jesus also warned us that beware of the wolf, 
in the lamb's clothing. So the person who has been possessed, of course he doesn't know. Huh? He's been uh, blindfolded and uh, seduced or bewitched by the power of the demon from heavens. From heavens, mind you, huh? very powerful, okay? Not just a normal demon from your local little <laughs> memorial place <laughs> outside in the <laughs> corner of the street. No, from heavens. So imagine how powerful he can be, at least more powerful than us the human, in the human bodies, understand? But if you are straightforward, you keep the moral precept, at least the five precepts only, that's good enough, no one can touch you. No one can touch you and don't worship anyone except God. Even if you don't find any master, if you don't believe me, just worship God only, God Almighty only, okay? Or Buddha, I mean truly Buddha in your heart. You just ask for the true Buddha, worship, maybe Shikamoni Buddha, Amitabha Buddha, or God Almighty, which is in your heart, you hold on to that, okay? Uh, if you ever doubt me or got out of here or got out of my circle, believe in God, believe in Buddha. Don't go worship any lower God. Or even God is from heaven, yeah? Mm. They might mislead you mm. and you'll be in trouble. Rather, don't have any master or any spirit or anything, okay? Just worship God until you're clear whom you want to follow, okay? Whom is the one worthy of your trust, okay? Rather have no one. Otherwise, you'll be misled and then it's too late, you know? Too late to turn around. Huh? Your life is precious, I tell you. If you lose this life, you never know when you get it again. You never know when you can find master again, you know? I mean, true master. Hmm? Many masters are enlightened, but what degree? Some are just third degree, a four level, yeah? Four is not bad already, mostly just third. They are enlightened. Not yet not, but not enough, okay? Not enough to liberate you. Some of my former teachers, I had to have them <laughs> to bring them to the higher level, at least to the fourth level. Maybe cannot bring to the fifth immediately, but the fourth, they are liberated. Huh? Because I also thank them for helping me, for loving me, for doing their best, whatever they know, they teach me. Maybe they only know that much, but they taught me with all their best. At least they don't lead me astray somewhere, okay? Go and worship demon or some magical things, yeah? Yeah, at least. All right, so now, remember, God, Buddhas, Bodhisattva, saintly, enlightened beings are everywhere, everywhere. What I mean is everywhere, wherever you are, their essence, yeah, their souls, their spirit, always everywhere. And if you sincerely pray, they will help you. If you don't have any master, sincerely pray, uh, mend your way, be vegan, keep the good moral conduct as you know it, from the church or from the Buddhist temple, from the Buddhas or from other religious uh, precepts. If you don't believe me uh, for any reason, be a good person, keep the precepts, worship God and Buddhas. No lower God, no lower a spirit or anything like that. They could harm you and then you can't get out. You can't get out of their, their clutch. And then even later, if you go find a master again, they make trouble for you. Yeah, they can. Because you were connected with them already and you worship them and they control you already. And now you want to leave them? Oh, not that easy. <laughs> I assure you who is powerful. In the human body, you are helpless. You are helpless. So just hang on to the pure teaching. That's why when the tenth guru of the Sikh uh, died, he said, just trust the Grand Sahib the teaching of the past Sikh master, because it's pure at least, it won't lead you astray, yeah, if you don't find any master, you worship that. Because at that time he didn't see any master that on the planet. Or maybe he could not see. Maybe the master has not appeared 
as a master. Maybe just born or maybe just ready, but not officially, yeah? So he say, worship the Grand Sahib. But that is for the direct descendants, okay? Direct disciples and maybe descendants of the disciple, but not after that, huh? After that, you must find a master. <laughs> the same reason why you found the ten guru, <laughs> Sikh guru or the guru Ramdas or guru Nanak in the first place. The same reason. <laughs> You found his master, the same reason you continue to have to find another master, not rely on only teaching. But if you cannot find, then have to rely on the precept and the teaching, okay? Yeah. So continue, huh? this person still breaks the Buddha precepts and indulges in his greedy desires. The other person, meaning the one possessed, is fond of saying that Buddhas are appearing in the world. He claims that in a certain place, a certain person is actually a transformation body of a certain Buddha. Or he says that a certain person is such and such a Bodhisattva who has come to teach humankind. People who witness this are filled with admiration. Their wrong views multiply and their wisdom of modes is destroyed. It's terrible when somebody just talks like that, harming so many souls. This is a drought ghost that in its old age has become a demon. It disturbs and confuses the good person. But when it tires of doing so, it will leave the other person's body, then both the disciples and the teacher will get into trouble with the law because they continue to do bad things, indulging in low desire, despite the moral conduct or despite the law, so, of course, after the demon left, they have no more power, then the law will catch them at the end. Not just misleading people, but having trouble with the, the law as well. My God, I'm telling you, everybody is a victim, huh? Eh? Tell you. You should be aware of this, I mean, Ananda and his assembly. You should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, meaning Anand, because Anand asked him, you will fall into the relentless hell. My God, the Buddha has a lot of energy, huh? He talked all this to Ananda. I don't know, we have to cut it into three days, three, four days, but he continued. I don't know how many days he, he teach Ananda in this. <laughs> I'm not sure if... He teach Ananda in the physical world, or he teach in the astral realm, and then when Ananda come back, <laughs> he wrote it down or tell people. How can a physical Buddha teach so much? Look here. And I, I cut some of the uh, 20 pages mantra already. It's no use to you. You can't repeat all that. <laughs> okay, and still continue, huh? Maybe he just said, okay, let's take a rest and have lunch and go back tomorrow, no? <laughs> because he has to go out and take arms, no? It could be maybe in the, the rainy day, rainy retreat. The Buddha has time every day, all day, to teach them and not go out for arms. In the monsoon season, it rains a lot. The Buddha don't let the monks go out to beg for food. But at that time, he already had a lot of disciples, so they bring food and necessity to them instead. I guess that's why it is. Because it's raining, and the, the monk has normally only one, one garment, you know, and one blanket, and one bowl, or even two, even two. But if you keep going out every day begging for food, your clothes will not be able to dry, right? I know that, because when I was in the Himalaya, I had only two pairs of Punjabi clothes. And even if not rain or rain, it get wet quickly. And I'm so clean, and the so, so habit dies hard, you know. In my own uh, life, anywhere, I wash my clothes clean. If any speck on it, any spot on it, oh, I cannot bear, I wash right away, yeah. So in the Himalaya, you know, sometimes it rains or sometimes no rain, but because the snow melted, and I walk all the time, and the uh, the mud spraying from my feet or from somebody else walking next to me, or from horses' <laughs> feet, 
and spray on my white bunjabi. I wear white, two pair white, cheap cotton. And then at n- uh, evening when everybody cannot walk no more because they have to stop to eat or something, I don't remember how I eat my food there. I don't remember if I ever eat. How did we do that? I can't remember eating. Okay, never mind. Uh, but everyone else, you know, who went to pilgrim, I don't know somehow they find food. I can't remember how. Nobody cooked there. And then we go and stay in some mud house, mud floor and all that. But my clothes, I have some black spot from the mud. And I wash. And then it won't dry. <laughs> And I wear another one. But that works only the first day. Huh? The second, the third day, the clothes always wet. And I just wear it. I wear it wet. It's not like dripping because I hang behind the fire. The fire they pay for. I didn't pay, so I hang behind people. And it's somehow not dripping wet. It's just still wet. And I just wear it. And after you walk for a while, you know, it's just dry by itself. Yeah. Maybe that's why the Indian wanted to marry me, he thinks I'm some sort of big shot. <laughs> Magic of our tough, you know, superwoman or something. I wasn't, I was just blind. <laughs> blind from anything around me, except want to know the truth. Blind, really blind, and my mind blank, I think. Yeah. In Germany, if you're a wife of a doctor, you're somebody, you know, not too bad. <laughs> I left that kind of life and walking alone like that. Huh? Two pairs of clothes and wearing wet and then dry it by no time. So they think maybe I have too much heat even. Like the solar plexus heat that can dry the body. The Himalaya monks or yogis, they can do that. They dry their clothes with the heat of their body. They don't have tumble dry or <laughs> clothes dry, nothing like us. And they don't have that many clothes. So they just have to learn to dry themselves <laughs> by their own body heat. I guess maybe they rub off some of this magical power on me. <laughs> I didn't learn any of that. I just have no choice. When you have no choice, maybe you have magical power to dry your clothes. <laughs> the cotton is not so thick. So if I wear for a while, you know, it becomes dry, very convenient. How cheap you can live there, you know? Nowadays, you have to pay for detergent, for washing machine, for a tumble dry, for dryer and all that. <sighs> but I have to pay a lot and they have to clean it now and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if the civilized life is better than the life in that Himalaya the life that I lived. I'm not sure which life is better. <laughs> I don't know which life is more comfortable, more convenient. But it's not like all that romantic. You walk and then you have to go and find your bathroom and sometimes you're in the wildness and then you hear some noise and you're scared, you know, some animals, <laughs> yeah. And also sometimes you can't find food. Yeah, and now I remember one time. The only one time I remember food is that time, because I went into a small star, and so many pilgrims, and he has only half of the bucket of the flour, you know, the flour that they make chapati. And I can get only one chapati. And that's already lucky. People who come behind, they say, only the empty bucket, no more. <laughs> Just a small little boy from somewhere village. He has only half a bucket of chapati flour. It tastes like heaven. Oh my God, I never remember anywhere tastes so good like that. I just remember the coming down from the Himalaya, I got that. Anywhere else, I don't remember how I got food. I don't remember if I ate. I cannot really remember. Just that time, only one because <laughs> it tastes so good. And then I ask for some more, I don't have more. Mm, tastes so good. So it's not like you, okay, you take a stick, you know, like master, and a sleeping bag, two pair of bunjabi, and then you walk there, and maybe somebody wants to marry you and that stuff. It's not like that, okay? 
the road is very difficult to walk sometimes. And if you're not careful, you fell down and die. Okay? Because it's very steep. Some, some place is high mountain, and down there is a river or the ravine, something. You can die anytime. And also because the ice is very slippery, yeah? So do not copy, okay? I don't recommend, really. I don't. I don't know if you can last even a few days because of the austerity of the situation, yeah? Not to talk about falling on the cliff or anything like that. I don't recommend, okay? It is very romantic to hear about it. <laughs> and it looks easy and it sounds easy. It's not. So if you go there, don't say that Master encourage you or because the Master advise. No, no, I don't advise. Okay? I went there, I bring this gift to you. You have it in your <laughs> bedroom even. Don't go anywhere. Don't go in the Himalaya. It's very dangerous. Hmm? Dangerous. If you don't believe me, you ask this Indian brother if all the Indian think is this a dangerous place or not. You tell them, brother. You tell them. That is the reason I took the shortcut. A uh, shortcut, okay, okay. Yeah. You tell them uh, the detail about well, the Indian, how do they think if, if, if you, you go. don't know where you're going and you don't know which guru to follow, you don't know which guru to find, and you don't, there is no road, nothing. So every day it snows and the road is covered and. Uh, so I still, I'm, I'm still surprised at how the little master came back safely. Yeah, I'm surprised too, now that I know about it. <laughs> I did not really know. I mean, I heard about it. But when you're here, it is like, okay, a novel story, you know? It's just like when you watch something on TV, you did not think anything that. But when you do it, it's different, okay? Even if you find a master, everybody looks like really enlightened. But <laughs> You cannot figure out the difference. It's true. Many, many uh, so-called monks or other masters just come and tell me, I am the guru. I will teach you this, I will teach you that. It's true. And after I stay with them a few days, I know it's not what I want. Yeah, I also don't know how, how I went back here. It's not only finding the master, but the road and all that, very difficult. Yeah, every comfort that you think you might have because you have money is wrong. <laughs> Even you have a lot of gold or money with you, you can't even buy food there. You can't find a hotel or anything like that. As your brother said, there's no road. You don't even know which road, and then the road are all covered with snow and with ice. Please don't go, eh? Please don't. Master, did, did you go to the Manas Sarovar? They say angels come and... Uh... I went also many places. I can't remember much. <laughs> Mansarova is a lake, right? Yeah. It's where you, you bathe and you have immortality. Yeah? It's heaven's lake and in the night and uh, angels come down. And Did you go there? No, I cannot there. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's very dangerous and risky. And, and uh, probably when I'm old, just to see, I'll, I'll hire a helicopter and go. Mm. If you have helicopter. <laughs> helicopter probably is the best. Solution, so you don't have to walk on dangerous road or slippery road. But helicopter is not always safe in the weather in Himalaya. Sometimes it changes so quick. Earlier we used to have all those uh, ideas to go and see places. Now you don't have to go anywhere, yeah. and uh, uh, master is there. So that's yeah. enough. It's, it's not much that you can search there. Okay, yeah. it's all uh, very good. Yeah, for good memory, for encouraging people to practice. And it's also good if you want to see it for your satisfaction. But there's not much you can derive from it. Uh, very dangerous, okay? Dangerous. <laughs> Do they have tiger in the Himalaya? Uh, no. No. Bears? Yeah, bears are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big. Oh, whoever the biggest in here, they're bigger than you. <laughs> yeah. And if they raw you, your soul leave the body without meditation. <laughs> no need, no need master. <laughs> they just raw and come to you and then your soul just leave automatically, you know? Easy. <laughs> Especially when you go out in the wild looking for a private place to do your business. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's not all that. 
romantic, okay? <laughs> okay, now the person is in good, good state of samadhi, but he is still greedy. It's not about greed, but maybe too anxious, too fanatically want to seek union, the spiritual oneness, yeah? And so he clarifies his concentrated thought as he greedily seeks for union, you know, union with God or the divine or whatever, that even still not good. You just let things take its course, it's better than pushing it. Huh? Because if you're so greedy in such a way or so fanatically seek for union with God when you're not ready, then the demon from the heavens sees the opportunity it has been waiting for. Its spirits possess another person and use him as mouthpiece to come to you and explain him, you follow me, you will go union with God, etc., etc. Same like if any master would tell you. This person, unaware that he is actually possessed by a demon, you know, this is the third person, yeah, not the meditator, claims that he has reached unsurpassed nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks union, he arranges a seat and explains a teaching to him. Neither his own body nor the bodies of those listening to the lecture go through any external transformations, but he makes the minds of the listeners become enlightened before they even hear him speak. So they experience changes in every thought. They may have the knowledge of past lives or the knowledge of others' thoughts. These are what we call, you can read other people's mind, yeah? one of those uh, power that you can acquire through meditation. But there's nothing much, okay? You can have it to use it. You can use it if you can control it. Otherwise, you will be disturbed by everybody else's thought all day. You go insane, yeah? No good, no good. Maya has tried that on me once. He make me hear people talking, <laughs> see people doing things from far, far away land. I say, oh, get over there. <laughs> Go away. I don't seek this kind of cheap, <laughs> I say cheap game, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it, the Maya try many ways to enchant you to make you stray away from your noble, high purpose. So um, they may even see the hells or know all the good and evil events in the human realm. They may speak verses or spontaneously recite sutras. Each person is elated and feels he has obtained something unprecedented. See, this is all for magic. The good person is uh, beguiled and fooled into thinking the other, you know, the preaching one is the bodhisattva, the possessed one. You see how powerful the demons can be, huh? So powerful. So we really are very vulnerable to all kind of cheating, all kind of misleading, oh, really terrible. That's why I'm telling you I feel sorry for everyone, even the worst criminal. Yeah, who knows, maybe the demon possess him and make him do things like that. Yeah, it happens, you know. Sometimes a criminal, they did something, and when they're out of that uh, possessed state, they don't remember what they did. But of course, the police won't believe him. That is a problem, yeah. I feel really sorry. I feel all the person, all the beings on this planet are all victims of some sort of some influence, either by other beings, by other humans, or by demons. That's why I'm really sorry for them. <sighs> if I could die 10,000 million times so that everyone can be relieved, I would immediately do it, without second thought. Because I feel so slow. Whatever must come and go, the beings are still suffering in darkness. There's no way they can make everyone liberated out of the Maya influence. And they suffer so much, so much, life after life. 
So because he believed that the possessed person who preached to him is a bodhisattva, so his thoughts become entangled in uh, lust. Yeah, he say love here, but <laughs> but it's not uh, what we mean by love. In this kind of physical attachment and lust, so he breaks the Buddha's moral precepts. That's why I say lust. I don't say love because <laughs> if you have love in your heart for other beings, for other suffering people, then you won't break the Buddha's precepts. Yeah. And you don't covertly indulge in your greedy desires, as the Buddha described here of the meditator who went astray. But it's my God is not his fault. He just have false thinking, false concept for a moment or two, or maybe even constantly. But he did not intend to harm anyone, and the demon still can possess him. It just depends on how you. It's not like okay, you want to become Buddha or you want to be one with God, then all the demons will come make trouble for you. It's not like that. It depends on why you want it, how you want it. Otherwise, the Buddha also wanted to become Buddha, but the demon also came to him and he told them get lost. <laughs> Just like Jesus meditate in the desert, demon also come to him and offer him the whole world, and he say get behind me, <laughs> go away. So imagine, huh? Imagine normal people. How much would they be like seduced into doing wrong thing or in the wrong concept? That's why I told you I feel sorry for everyone. It's all victims. Once you come to this physical world, you are vulnerable to all kind of attacks, all kinds. Not just physical, mental, psychic, emotional, but even spiritual attack. So he is fond of saying, you know, same same to other ghosts before him. The possessed person is fond of saying that there are greater Buddhas and lesser Buddhas, earlier Buddhas and later Buddhas. That among them are true Buddhas and false Buddhas, male Buddhas and female Buddhas, and no such thing as male and female Buddhas. <laughs> Unless the Buddha descend into this physical world, there's not nothing as female and male in the Buddha's dream. And that the same is true of bodhisattvas. When people witness this, their initial resolve is washed away, and they easily get carried away with their wrong understanding. Meaning, when people come to this uh, ghost possessed person, they came with good intention, pure desire to know God, to uh, know the Buddha, yeah. But then after they hear him talk, even though he talk about that, talk about Buddhas and all that, but he diluted their resolve, their pure intention in the beginning. So instead of encourage them, the listeners, followers, to continue with their noble resolve when they start, their preaching, so-called preaching of the Buddhas and all that, have the opposite effect. This is a problem, you see? So at least you can know the wrong from the right, huh? If somebody preaches to you, and you suddenly feel like, oh, I don't care about precept, or there are better Buddha somewhere, you know, in heaven, I, I should seek for that instead of uh, worrying about Shakyamuni Buddha or Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, etc., or God. So instead of uh, making the people have more firm belief in their belief, like believe in God, in believe in Jesus, believe in Buddha, uh, they just dilute their belief and make them feel more confused, thinking there's, the Buddha is not too good, Jesus is uh, nothing, etc., etc., and they lost their faith. Okay? So that means this is a fake master in any case. If they make you doubt God or the past great masters, then no good, <laughs> okay, no good. This is a, a male ghost that in its old age has become demon. It disturbs and confuses the good person, but when it tires of doing so, it will leave the, the other person's body, then both the disciples and teacher will get into trouble with the law. It's similar to the above cases. You should be aware of this, mean Ananda and other monks, 
should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will fall into the relentless hells. Oh man, so many hells. Oh. Further, in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone, meaning after the feeling skanda disappear from this practitioner, there could be many states like this happening to him because at that time his mind is very clear, is on a high level of elevation of enlightenment. But this and that could happen to him due to his mind still not clean, still have ambition, still have desire. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot to drink tea. I don't have any tea in my house. I wanted to have one. <laughs> Uh, they give me so many teas. Not that they don't give, it's just sleeping tea, relaxing tea, night night tea, calm night, <laughs> no worry tea. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, if I drink that, I say, okay, all of you, take care of yourself. <laughs> you have no problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the CP do what they want, okay too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be happy, no worry, go lucky, right? <laughs> I want to find the tea that keeps me awake a little while. I normally don't drink tea or coffee, very rarely, yeah? Except when I was in India, <laughs> I was constantly hungry. <laughs> so the, the mo mostly the tea is always available, you know? And then you can dip some, uh, what is that then? Huh? Tea what? Tea, tea biscuits. No, I don't even have biscuits, you're lucky. Yeah. Uh, I have some uh, instant noodle. No, instant noodle, <laughs> I soak in it. And then, you know, it calm the stomach. <laughs> no need calm tea. The, the instant noodle in that tea, even black tea calm my stomach right away. <laughs> oh man, I'm coming here to work and they give me only this calm tea, relaxing tea, good night tea, night night tea, no worry tea. Oh man, you see my cupboard full of these kind of teas. I dig them all out, it's all the same. Upstairs same, downstairs same. <laughs> they think I come here just to sleep. Huh? <laughs> my God. You guys, I mean, some of you or I mean, whoever that was, truly are in a very big dreamy state of samadhi. I think the master life is so smooth. All she does is just drinking tea and go sleep. <laughs> yeah, therefore there's so many of this kind of tea. It's a different names, but same effect, you know? Calming, sleeping, <laughs> dreaming. <laughs> uh, sweet dream tea, you know? <laughs> You really had no idea how I have to work, do you? Wake up, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have the masala chai in my bag, Master. I have it, <laughs> darling. I have, sweetheart. They also give me, uh, you know, lovely note masala chai and this uh, ready-made instant coffee, yeah? With milk and all that. But it's too sweet. Yes. For me, I can't take it. Mm. Too much sweet sometimes it gives you heart uh, acid, you know, heartburn or something. I drink that and if I, I eat something that is not uh, compatible with it, I had not too many choices, you know, they cook for me. Here I have no choice. <laughs> and then uh, you, I might have heart problem. Hmm? Hmm. Normally I don't like sweet too much, except when I was in India because I was so hungry. You know, when I finish working, I come out, no food left, only many, many, a lot of dishes, you know, and I start washing. <laughs> that also calms your hunger. You forget, you know, for a while. And, and then in India, I always crave for sweet. Oh, it would be lovely to have some of these, uh, you know, sweeter than sweet, the Indian sweet. Because the weather is hot. Yeah, oh, so many. Indian sweet is sweetest in the whole world. <laughs> sweeter than sugar, <laughs> sweeter than sweet, yeah. Very sweet. And normally I don't like it. In, in India, I long to have some. Don't have. 
If we order them, they'll ship it in 24 hours, Master. I know. Thank you, my Lord. I, you were not there. Yeah. I were nobody. Even you, you were there, you won't find me anywhere. I'm just one of the crowd, yeah, who works for the master of that ashram, but has no pay, no food. <laughs> even, even work for food is, is, is not the norm there. They forgot me, yeah? They eat everything and they left all the, the dirty dishes. <laughs> and one time, I went into the kitchen, you know? Uh, because I saw the dishes from outside, from the, the door. I went in to try to wash the dishes, mountains. <laughs> All the disciples ate and followed the master, the guru. And I am left alone, you know. I just finished office work. I go out see the dishes. I went in the kitchen to work. And then after some time, I saw the master coming. He probably think, he probably saw me come in the kitchen. Why a long time I did not come out? What am I doing in there? <laughs> There's nothing in there to eat. Not even raw food, raw potato, raw flour, nothing. After they cook, they moved it out. You understand? Or maybe they cook somewhere else, I don't know. Empty. <laughs> uh, and the master just saw it and then passed by. Don't say nothing. I also don't say anything. <laughs> I'm too busy washing up. Yeah, it's just karma, okay? It's not the Indian people. They're very hospitable. Huh? Everywhere you go, they offer what they have. Huh? I experienced that when I walk around alone in the Indian uh, country. They all greet me with, uh, you know, happiness and hospitality. And I wasn't wearing monk robe or anything, not all the time. Only when some Indian tried to flirt with me because I was alone, then I begin to wear the monk robe to ward them off. Yeah. In, in Pune, we saw Master is wearing a sari. Ah uh, yeah yeah yeah. I was uh, invited there. I didn't know where Puna and what they're doing. <laughs> I was invited. I thought I came in there to talk, and then when I went there, just doing nothing much, just listen to their music, and then I had something I had to leave. Yeah, I wear sari not just there in the, in America. I also wear sometimes. Yeah. Why you tell me that? No, we we saw the videos, man. Ah uh, okay okay. I wear all kind of things. Don't you know? <laughs> My wife is Indian, and she saw Master wearing sari, she felt happy. Of course, yes. And that's why I wear it, to make your wife happy. <laughs> and many other wives happy. What do you think why I wear it? And, and, and she, put, she put it as a, a picture on the laptop, desktop picture. Ah, my guru, Indian. <laughs> yeah, they like it, of course. Ah, wearing sari is not all that easy. It's a long, long thing. You have to know how to wrap it, otherwise it keeps falling. One layer after another keep falling, you know. <laughs> it's five, five meters. Yeah, you have to know how. Otherwise, you must have a servant who will help you. Otherwise, you, every layer keep falling off. It's like a, a spiral, yeah. You must know how to tuck in where and what. Otherwise, you keep falling, you know, one layer after another. Yeah, it look beautiful, though, when the Indian wear it. Beautiful, yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> I, I ordered... Order the sari for me when, when I go to India. Yeah. Okay, now it's a May, May ghost that in its old age become demon, blah, blah, blah. You know, the teacher and disciple got into trouble with the law. You should be aware of this. Further, in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone, you get rid of this attachment from emotion. And then your mind is very clear and brightness everywhere. Wow, even then. This good person is un untroubled by any deviant mental state and experiences perfect, bright concentration. I didn't learn all this word in English school before. What is deviant? What is samadhi? What is <laughs> all kind of things. <laughs> They, I don't think they're teaching you about demons and may goes and all that in English school, did they? No. no. Okay. <laughs> they don't even know what may goes is. They probably never heard it in their whole life. Or many incarnations never heard of may goes or lee goes or, you know, desire goes and <laughs> a clever, bright goes or whatever. My God. Hmm. 
And we think we're the only beings on this planet, huh? Oh, many people think they are the only beings. Uh, I mean, everywhere. The whole universe is only us. Yeah. <laughs> no one else. <laughs> There's some theory thinking like that, huh? The Buddha saw him. <laughs> and then after he get rid of the feeling skanda, that he's more clear, okay? He's non-attached, no more emotional, and even he can control his emotion. That's what it is. Maybe he still has emotion, but for him, he knows. It's just a state of mind. It's easy for him to control now. Uh, and he's untroubled at all by any deviant mental state and experiences perfect, bright concentration. Wow. Everyone would think you already, yeah, get to the seventh heaven, right? <laughs> Within samadhi, his mind craves to know the origins of things. So he exhaustively investigates the nature of physical things and their changes from beginning to end. He intensifies the keenness of his thoughts as he greedily seeks to analyze things. Even in samadhi, how can anybody be thinking like that, huh? You would think if, if you are in samadhi, you are all quiet and tranquil, yeah, peaceful, still have some of this subtle thought from the mind, because the mind has, has been programmed at the second level. Not, not high level. So you're programmed to think that, do that, want that. And then also the memories from this physical life, when you're born until now, you have so many images as recorded yeah, from the brain and then transmit the mind, also know it, and then that's how it keeps broadcasting out for you, just like a record player. So. At that time, eh, when he was greedily seek to analyze things, because you, when you want to analyze things, that means you're still in, in this kind of intellectual trap eh, of thinking what's right, what's wrong, where, why, how, what, yeah, and all that. So you're not truly enter into the deep state of reunion with God. That's why the ghost can come. Now, at that time, a demon from the heavens sees the opportunity it has been waiting for. Its spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to expound the sutras and explain the teachings. This person, the one who possesses, yeah, unaware that he is possessed by a demon, claims he has reached and surpassed nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks to know the origin of things. He arranges a seat and explains the teachings, maybe the Buddha's teaching or any other master teaching. His body has an awesome spiritual quality which subdues the seeker. Oh, the poor seeker is too weak for him. He has awesome power, <laughs> oppress him, so he cannot even think anything because he's so eager to seek uh, knowledge of the origin of all things. Yeah, and then he himself being cheated by this demon. He makes the mind, the, the possessed person, makes the minds of those gathered beside his seat spontaneously compliant. Yeah, oh, compliant, meaning they just so subdue in their mind that they have nothing, no, nothing against him at all, cannot not even rising a doubt or a thought or, or even a little suspicion, nothing. All spontaneous compliance. Or imagine the demon's power. Hmm? If the Buddha were to use that, then he subdued all the whole world already. No need anybody else to come behind him. You see, that's the difference between a Buddha and a demon. The demon, he uses power just to control people. Hmm? The Buddha, he has to use reason. Yeah? If he used his power at all, it's because that person needs it. Maybe need to heal at that time, need to be uh, awakened from some, some trouble, hmm? like Ananda, for example, and to use it to help his disciple. 
yeah, in time of need, yeah. Otherwise, if the Buddha used all his power just to bless his person, control that person, then the whole India at that time would kneel at his feet already. No need me to sit here and repeat after him. <laughs> Understand? So Buddha don't use this kind of power. Jesus did not. That's why they still can doubt him, slander him, and even kill him. You got that? That is a difference. The master like Jesus or Buddha, they are mighty, mighty, mighty. They have to be humble, to be born like a human being, and just use reason, hmm? use uh, logic to tell people that this is logical, huh? this is reasonable, huh? you should listen. And then they listen, they believe. Then the Buddha transmits more inside power to them, give them initiation, awaken their Buddha power, awaken their own ability and enlightenment inside. Imagine a Buddha who has been practicing eons like that, so much power, and still has to humbly be just like a normal person, and let other people even doubt him, slander him, and uh, uh, want to assassinate him. Huh? Jesus is the same. That is the difference between uh, black magic, demonic power, and the true power of love. Hmm? People might feel love, and they're drawn to him, to the Buddha, to Jesus, or feel in his benevolence, or feel in his brilliant logic, reasoning talk. Then they come. Hmm? But not magic power, blinding people and controlling people's minds. They they completely just complying like that. Then you know, okay. <laughs> You know, you can't resist and you feel that like you're powerless, even though maybe you think you should get out of there or you think this master maybe not what you want, but you can't get out, like you're bound it there. Then you should know it's no, 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 huh? No, no. So these people who gather around this uh, practitioner, listening to the demon-possessed person, feel helplessly subdued, <laughs> just like that, sitting there can't even think or doing anything anymore. Mm. Mm. He says, the demon-possessed person says to all those people that the Buddha's nirvana, buddhi, and dharma body are there before them in the form of his own physical body. He proclaimed, the demon-possessed person proclaimed that the Buddha, you know, is now, is him. <laughs> Proclaim like that. He says, the, the, the successive begetting of fathers and sons from generation to generation is itself the Dharma body, which is permanent and never ending. It sounds good, though. Huh? It sounds correct. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not a correct Buddha. <laughs> so, what you see right now are those very Buddha's lands. They make them see some hallucination. Yeah. There are no other pure dwellings or golden features. I mean, whatever the Buddha say, or the Buddha land, are no. Just his, whatever he make them see now, is the Buddha's land. Those people believe and accept his words, forgetting their initial resolve, forget their faith, forget what they really wanted to do. They offer up their lives even, my God, feeling they have obtained something unprecedented. They are all beguiled and confused into thinking he is a bodhisattva. As they pursue his ideas, they break the Buddha's moral precepts and covertly indulge their greedy desires. He is fond of saying that the eyes, ears, nose, and tongue are the pure land. Oh God, how can that be? Hmm? and that the male and the female organs are the true place of body, oh God, and nirvana, oh God. Ignorant people believe these filthy words, probably some misled tantric teacher, huh? Mm. This is a, a poisonous ghost or an evil paralysis ghost that in its old age has become a demon. 
It disturbs and confuses the good person, but when it tires of doing so, it will leave the other person's body. Then both the disciples, so-called disciples, and the teacher will get into trouble with the law, as usual. Eh? Procrastinating physical pleasure, sexual conduct, all that stuff. My God. But a lot of people will believe it, you know. Evidence told you, yeah, right? Historical evidence show it to you somewhere, some in some other country. All right. The Buddha say that, you know, they get into trouble with the law. And then the Buddha say, you should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will fall into the relentless hell. Further, in this unhindered clarity even and wonder that ensues after the feeling scandal is gone, this good person is untroubled by any deviant mental state and experiences perfect, bright concentration. Wow. We would think that's the end, huh? Perfect, bright concentration. And within the samadhi even, his mind craves revelations from afar. So he pours all his energy into this intense investigation as he greedily seeks for imperceptible spiritual responses. Oh, man, just that even. And can be cheated by demons. At that time, a demon, a demon from the heavens sees the opportunity it has been waiting for. His spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to expel the sutra and the teaching. And this person, of course, doesn't know he's possessed and claims he has reached unsurpassed nirvana, just the same like the other ghosts. And he comes to see that good person and the one who seeks revelation of spiritual attainment, of heavens and all that. I did not seek, it just comes, okay? Nobody come to me, uh, possess and preach to me about the nirvana and stuff like that. <laughs> no, this is not the case. It's different, okay? It's been revealed by a uh, higher vision, okay? It's not like any person come with possess the power and then tell me this and that. And then I see this and that. it's not like that. Nobody, just me. <laughs> And I did not seek, I even, did, did not even know that there are some more things to seek. I'm too busy with you guys. Thank you, you rescued me by, because of that. <laughs> too busy. <laughs> too busy to seek anything else. Oh, sign document. Uh, correct the, correct the, the show. Correct the script. Oh, dog. Okay, okay, I'm coming, coming. <laughs> Attendant, sick, A dentist, doctor. Uh, coming, coming. Okay, okay. Uh, can I eat something first? <laughs> it's good that you're busy, okay? So it's not that if you go all in the mountain and sit all the time, then you get into a Buddha's land. Maybe not. Maybe the work is good for you. <laughs> Keep you too busy to even thinking, I want to seek something. <laughs> Spiritual revelation or skills or knowledge like this uh, practitioner, okay? Truly, when you're so busy every Waken minute of your life, you, you would not be able to think about anything. <laughs> Truly not. <laughs> and uh, if you have to work while you're eating as well, then maybe it's even less, you know, you concentrate on the food. <laughs> too, too hungry, yeah? Or maybe half on the food, half on your document. Uh, then at least your mind is all in the good things not uh, too idle to, to think of uh, any other greedy stuff, whether domestic or heavenly, yeah. Um, that's why in the West we have a saying, say, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. It is like that, yeah, mind you. So be busy. <laughs> no thinking of boyfriend in your samadhi. <laughs> or girlfriend. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he briefly appears, the, the demon-possessed person briefly appears to his listeners in a body that looks a hundred or thousand years old. He just 
use a magic to do that. They experience a defiling love for him. Defiling attachment is better than love. I don't know why the Buddha used the word love here. Maybe the translator. I think in the, in the old time, we don't have so much vocabulary, you know, to express differently, yeah? yeah. Uh, so, so everybody nowadays also even, they just say, I love you, you know? In fact, actually, just want to go to bed with you, something like that, yeah. Well, not all, of course, okay, huh? Not all, but it's our enemy is coming back. And love, it's just so much love, yeah. <laughs> so they experience a defiling desire, okay, or attachment or lust for him and cannot bear to part with him. It's similar to, to the love they have for the master, eh? When the Buddha was alive, the disciple also want to be with him all the time, yeah? and always come to see him. And when Jesus was alive, people also hang around him, yeah? It's so similar that you could not even tell. Don't you see how poor people are? How, how pitiful our beings are, eh? Yeah. They don't even know anything. And these guys who come from nowhere and then, and then defy them like that and cheat them like that. This is not fair, I tell you. That's why I hate Maya. I, I say, I look down upon you. I have no word to describe how much my heart despises you. <laughs> I have no words. Just get out of my sight. <laughs> Sometimes you come and blah, blah. <laughs> so get out of my sight. <laughs> I feel repulsive when I see you. Yeah. When I think of whatever you do to other people, you know, you better stay away from me. <laughs> We are not, not the same type. We are not the same kind. Okay, so they cannot bear to part with him even. So they personally act as his servants, tirelessly making the four kinds of offering to him. Each member of the assembly believes that this, you know, possessed person is his former teacher his original good and wise advisor even. They give rise to uh, love for his teachings and stick to him as if glue. <laughs> glue. <laughs> Feeling they have obtained something unprecedented, like the other mentioned before. The good person is beguiled and fooled into thinking the other is a bodhisattva. Attracted to the other's thinking, he breaks the Buddha's moral precepts and covertly indulges his greedy, in his greedy desires, you know, like other things. He is fond of saying, in a past life, in a certain incarnation, I rescue a certain person who was then my wife or my mistress or my brother. Now I have come to rescue you again. We will stay together and go to another world to make offering to a certain Buddha. Or he may say, there is a heaven of great brilliance where Buddha now dwells. It is the resting place of all Tathagata. Ignorant people believe his ravings and lose their original resolve. Originally, they probably might still believe in Sakamoni Buddha or some real Buddha in the past, and that's why they make offering and all that, and then that's why they came to hear him in the first place. But because of they talk nonsense like that, and precepts is nothing, you do what you want, because of his power to control them. They believe him so much that they do anything that is against the moral basic standards, okay, of being a good human being. So, of course, but he has a name. The ghost has a name. This is a pestilence ghost. There's <laughs> so many ghosts. In his old age, has become a demon. See how powerful they are. It disturbs and confuses the good person, the one who meditates and, and seek uh, those things. But when it tires of doing so, it will leave the other person's body. Then both the so-called disciples and teacher will get into trouble with the law. You should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will fall into the Relentless hell, my goodness. Hmm. Should we continue? Is it okay with you? Yeah. 
How come you like to hear about demons so much? <laughs> huh? You love to avoid them. Okay, good. Thank you. Knowing us and knowing others are the way to win, a way for victory. If you just know yourself and you don't know others, your opponent, then you will lose. Huh? That's good. That's what we say in Vietnam. Huh? Knowing the opponent and knowing yourself, meaning know the capability of both. And 100 times you, you fight, 100 times you win. I mean, you win any time. Mm. It's good that we know our opponents, yeah? It's not a monk who sits there, Buddhist, or Tibetan monk, no? I look at all of you like monks and nuns nowadays. <laughs> In this assembly, you have all become monks and nuns, at least for one week, huh? at least for some days. The demons scare you to death. <laughs> you, you're not there to think about anything else, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you, Buddha. Thank you. I don't know how many days the Buddha has spoken to Ananda for this, yeah? Because he continued. It doesn't say here, okay, let's go have a tea break or anything. <laughs> Continue forever. I wonder if the Buddha preached to him in Tusita heaven, uh, not, uh, not on this planet. He didn't say so. He just say uh, even uh, Ananda arranged his robe, meaning you make it straight and respectful. And then he asked the Buddha, he knelt and asked the Buddha, please tell him how to rescue sentient beings. Even though he say he's not nowhere yet but how he can, he and other can rescue other beings, yes. He's just humble, or maybe he doesn't know his state. Of course, he has to play his role at that time. Otherwise, how come the Buddha just die not long, and then he enlightened and become, you know, one of the successors right away, yeah? So now, uh, the pestilence, oh God, Whew, rotten ghost, and have so much power. I feel ashamed as human. He's just a rotten ghost and he has so much power to sway people's mind and cheating them into believing him that much. And we so powerless. We're supposed to be God and Buddha. How we have no power. Huh? Imagine that. That's the price to come into this physical body, huh? That's the price to pay. You have come here for some reason. And you also have to make a contract before you come. You have made a contract. Maybe also intended to do good, but then when we come down here, they make us forget everything, forget, and just go with the flow. This is a pestilence ghost that became a demon in his old age. It disturbs, confuses people. Uh, when he leaves the body, that body, then uh, both of the so-called disciples and the teacher will get into trouble with the law. The Buddha doesn't say so-called disciple. You know, I add it to make it more clarified for you, okay? Yes, because the Buddha is so, he's so gentle. He said that both the teacher and the disciples, <laughs> this kind of disciple and teacher. Further, in the Unhindered clarity and wonder even that ensues after the feeling skanda is gone. My God, the feeling skanda is a big hindrance before so that you cannot go into further stage. But after that, you still are vulnerable. This good person is untroubled by any deviant mental state and experiences perfect, bright concentration. But within samadhi, I mean, when he's sitting in Samari, my God, his mind craves deep absorption, so he restrains himself with energetic diligence and likes to dwell in secluded places as he greedily seeks for peace and quiet. <sighs> Even in Samari, still fall into trouble like that. So beware, okay? Always recite the protective five names and the gifts, if you remember. Yeah. And do not think that you are anywhere yet. 
even if you anywhere, so what? Okay. Important is be a good person. Keep the moral precepts. Meditate diligently so that you can elevate yourself and maybe some leftover blessing for other people around you. And if there are enough people like that on our planet, then the world will become a much better, peaceful, paradise-like. Hmm? Hmm. Yeah. We have to do it. Hmm? We have to do it. Because, look, many masters come and go. They can only do so much, okay? Because of the karma of the world that affects everyone. No? And also the, uh, the, the minds of the people on this planet make it difficult for any master to even continue to stay alive and to teach them anything because they don't accept, they, they reject, they, they confuse. They, they've been confused and brainwashed by so many of these so-called demon-possessed uh, person. And even after the demon left, these people still continue to be confused. Oh, just be good, do good, <laughs> yeah? Meditate well and pray for protection and deliverance, that's all. And if any merit at all left over, then please help the planet. <laughs> that's it. That's all you pray for, okay? Yeah. Or you don't even need to pray. Just meditate well, be humble. Yeah. God know what you want. Mm? Yes. But pray, make sure, no? Or make sure that to reaffirm to yourself that I just want deliverance. I just want protection. Protection and deliverance. Protection while you are here and meditation and in meditation. And during the day, every day, at night, morning, pray for protection and Help, yeah? Evening, thanks for a good day, that you have been well and protected, and maybe you have done something good. Be able to have done something good. Okay, huh? that's it. If you have done something good, credit it to heaven or God, God Almighty. Yeah, then you have no ego problem. Nothing that arises from your mind that you not aware of, because you remind yourself every day. In the morning, you pray for protection and deliverance. Even if you thank God for helping you through the whole day, good, good or bad, whatever. So at least you remind yourself that you're not wanting anything like those practitioners without teacher here. Hmm? So the Buddha said to Ananda, they should be aware in advance. Before he got into this state, he should know that already. So now you know this state, yeah? So before you get into samadhi and you see certain something, you are already prepared, okay? It's good, so you don't fall into any hell. I won't let you, of course, if you keep your precepts and meditate even off and on <laughs> with your sincere heart, yeah? Because I know it's difficult. I told you many times that it's difficult to, to even be a good person in this world because you also other people who don't like you to be good, jealous of you or thinking you're weird in such a world why you are good, yeah? And then make trouble for you. Even difficult to be a good person, not to talk about meditation, reach heaven, nirvana, nothing yet, okay? And if you mention your master name, you're in more trouble <laughs> in some places, right? Ching <laughs> Hu? What does she say? <laughs> yeah. And then they ask, is she a nun? Mm, don't look like. <laughs> she a monk? Mm, don't look like. Then she cannot say anything. She don't understand anything. Only monks and nuns understand. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't believe her, don't follow her, such stuff like that. And it's very difficult for you to find time even to meditate or to do some good things. Yeah, we have only 24 hours and one physical frail body. Yeah? We might be feeling strong, but how strong can we be compared to elephant, horses, mountain, <laughs> river, sea, trees? Yeah? How strong are we? 
Hmm? We can't fly. <laughs> we can't run fast. We almost like very, very uh, handicapped in many ways. Yeah, we can't even think for ourselves because we've been brainwashed by the society or by any other so-called teacher to believe in this, believe in that, and sometimes we're all confused already and have even no time to sort out. <laughs> Except when you really have a time to meditate or in retreat, have a little time to be clear about what you really want or what is really right, what is really wrong. Very difficult already. So if you just keep the precepts, meditate as much as you can, be vegan. Yeah, and be good or at least not bad to anyone. That is safe already, okay? And uh, the master power do the rest. Huh? <laughs> Keep the precept, okay? That's the beginning, okay? And it's a safety guard for you. You see, every master come tell you precept. Every master come always teach you precept, no? Mm, Buddha, even lay people must take five precepts. Jesus, Moses, all precepts, precept, moral standards. Yeah? Jain, Jainism, mm, Jainism, Mahavira, Lord Mahavira also teach precepts. Guru Nanak, everyone tell you to keep your moral standard first of all, because if you don't have that, then your spiritual practice is based only on nothing. Hmm? No good to begin with, yeah? No base, yeah? If a house is built without a basement, without foundation, it won't last, yeah? It will top, topple, okay? So precept is the basement, is the, is the foundation of our spiritual progress. Don't forget, okay? No matter what vision you see inside, what sound you hear inside, you must remember to be a moral, upright person, okay? Don't tell me everything empty, illusion and all that. Keep the precept, as long as your body is not illusion, okay? If you beat yourself, you still feel hurt, then you are not in emptiness or illusion, nada. Keep the precept. Got that? And remember, one practitioner, he, he got into the state that you, you stop him, he don't feel nothing. He still fall into a trap from demons and can go to hell. Remember that? Yes. So you are zero, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I respect you and love you, but do not feel too proud about your practice. Understand? Just keep it calm, low-key. Be yourself good first before you teach others. Uh -huh. Because if you are not strong enough, the one you want to teach might even topple you. Because his view might be also eloquent, maybe he's from second level, he can even re-preach you into <laughs> turning your view around and, and making trouble. Huh? Or he might be possessed by this, that, this, that, this, 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 this demons. And then he preach you back, and then you do. Okay? <laughs> no, not be hurry. Tell them eat vegetarian, okay. <laughs> Vegan, okay, but not, not hurry, okay? Not hurry. Ah, so, so scary. Huh? So if somebody preach to you against all the precepts, against all the moral standards, and say everything is illusion, anyway you do what you want, there's no sin, no, then you must know it's wrong. Hmm? that that person is possessed, yeah? Stay away quick, don't try to convert him. You can't. You might not be strong enough, you will fall instead. You might not be strong enough, okay? If you happen to feel like you are possessed or maybe fall into some bad influence, call the master to help you, huh? Okay, recite the five names, recite the gift, <laughs> call the master if you're helpless, okay? Yeah, it's safer that way. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now there's another one here. So, 
Hmm? Where am I? Okay. Pestilence gods, yeah? Okay, already, already. Then after the ghost leave, they'll be in trouble with the law. Okay, you should aware of that, otherwise go to <laughs> hell. Sorry, same hell, my God. So when the, the same state of mind after the feeling skanda is gone, this good person is in trouble by any way at all. Mm-hmm. Bright concentration, samadhi, his mind still care, craves something. It's a deep absorption. It's very difficult to clean all the mind from the, for all the impression from life after life. Eh? Very difficult. So he restrains himself with energetic diligence and likes to dwell in seclusive, secluded place as he greedily seeks for peace and quiet. You see, this is terrible. When a person in such a samadhi is strong and bright and clear already and left all, all emotion and attachment behind, still this impression still pop up. Yeah? Even maybe even with the disciples of the Buddha. That's why the Buddha said to Ananda, you must be aware of that in advance. The Buddha didn't say, okay, I give you initiation, you are my foremost disciple, you have no problem. No, because, because why? Because at time of initiation, the Buddha or the Master cut you off from all the kind of karma in the past life. But the present karma has to retain. The present karma is the price you have to pay to stay alive in this physical planet and having this physical body, physical mind, physical sensation, pleasure, and all that. Understand? Even then, we already follow the Buddha. Uh, become a monk even, has nothing anymore, eat only once a day, like the monks Buddha, they eat only once a day. So can you imagine how cruel is the Maya system? How cruel? Like Ananda, being up and down through thick and thin with the Buddha, lives after lives already, accumulate so many merit and such a good bodhisattva with compassionate heart and all that. Left home already, have no wife, no kids, no fancy clothes, no car, nothing. Go out, have to beg for food even. Humbly beg for food. Sometimes have, maybe sometimes don't have already. Yeah? Once a day eating only and still has to pay all this in samadhi. Not like you go out and stir a problem with any gangster or anything. You just sit mind your own business in your own little corner and still have to be disturbed by this kind of mind, thought or desire or thinking. You understand? So the maya never leave you alone must remember that, okay? I I don't care what intention he has, good or bad, he does his job or not do his job, or whatever, he do good to you or not do good to you, you must be aware of this (laughs) pestilent guy, okay? Terrible, rotten guy, (laughs) pestilent guy, if he is a guy, yeah. Mm, We always say guy, maybe he's a girl, who knows? (laughs) Okay, meaning this being. There's another word for it. Entity? Entity, yeah, this entity, thank you. This is like that. You have to be aware of him all the time. Otherwise he cheats you without shame, you know? He can lie also, he can lie. Because he don't care about precepts, nothing, he owns the world, okay? Who is going to punish him? Yeah? He's a king of this kingdom, okay? Physical realm. He does what he wants. Who's going to punish him? Huh? Oh, he already established his reign so deeply, you know, and he has subordinate long arms everywhere and, and, and brainwashing all beings, life after life, already into such a terrible state of degradation that they don't even know what's right or wrong anymore. They don't even know the teacher when they come. They don't know Buddha when he comes. They don't know Jesus when he arrives. Yeah? So deeply rooted 
in negativity. Yeah, therefore. Therefore, no, nobody even punishing him. Nobody there, nobody think about it. You see, the whole world support him hmm? by doing exactly what he wants and doing bad things. Doing bad things. There was a joke of somebody, uh, a doctor who went to the to to hell mm-hmm. and facing the hell king. It's not his turn to be judged yet, so he saw the king of hell passing judgment to this person, that person, you know, like uh, the prostitute. He award her. You know, give her reward and all that praise, and then she's going to have another good life again, and blah, blah. And another person, like killing animals and all that, and give him rewards. And then the doctor, in turn, the doctor, they say, Oh, please spare me. Please spare me. Please give me another life. I know what to do now. <laughs> I will please you. I will know. I will send my daughter to the, the pink house, I send my son to the a uh, butcher uh, slaughterhouse, just spare me so that I can go up and <laughs> and turn around. It's a joke, but it is like that. The whole world just obey the the commandment of this brainwashing power from the Maya. Huh? Hmm. Now that we have destroyed some of these controlling machines, but that's not all, okay? The Maya is still there. That machine is not Maya. Machine can be destroyed. Maya not easy, because he already has so many supporters everywhere. You know that you serve a leader. You need a lot of support from people, right? You can't just go alone, two, three, or four people, or be two, three hundred people and go and kill the king or the president or somebody. You die before you even get near. Mm. So similar in this world is like that. The Maya is supported. So he can proudly proclaim, look, I win the hearts of all my people. Why are you going to like, uh, fire me? How can? You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because then he also connected with all these people. If you want to destroy him, you have to destroy everyone, the whole planet. God intended to do that. But that is too tragic, too pitiful, you know? So the saints interfere, you know? That's why the saints said, let me, let me come down with them, reason with them. You know, maybe some of them still have some spark of intelligence within them. I can awake them. Please don't just destroy everyone. There are some good things, some good spark in some human's heart. Let me do it. Let me suffer for them to redeem their whatever past deeds that they've done. Let me have it, and then they can be awakened. That's why the saints keep coming. Understand that? Otherwise, why do they leave Nirvana, okay? Okay, now, this person in Samadhi, even in Samadhi, it's not just like an ordinary state of of mind, that they want in this and that. This in Samari, he wants something more subtle, you see? In ordinary life, we want money, we want a beautiful wife, a handsome husband, a position, and blah, blah, blah. In Samari, <laughs> you, you want, you know, cleverness, intelligence, etc., etc., you know, and you want the revelation of where all things come from, what is that, why is that, and you want the uh, deep absorption. Let's see what the Buddha <laughs> explained. Craves, he craves, his mind, eh? not his soul. His mind craves deep absorption. So he restrains himself with energetic diligence and likes to dwell in secluded place so that he has more time to absorb all this. You know, he wants to be absorbed into like, the cosmic energy or the original power, whatever that is he wanted to. Mm. At that time, a demon from the heavens sees the opportunity it has been waiting for. Its spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to expound the sutras and the teaching. Yeah. Here, I guess, 
teaching of the Buddha, okay, the Buddha, when the Buddha passed away, yeah. This person, unaware that he is possessed by a demon, claimed he had reached unsurpassed nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks seclusion, he arranges a seat and explains the teachings. He causes all of his listeners around him to think they know their karma from the past. It happens. Yeah. Some people follow some teacher, they can see the past karma, the past life and everything. Okay, beware. It's not it yet, okay? It's not it yet. Be careful, okay, huh? That's not all there is, no? Nah? The Buddha say it here, not I. Oh, I say the same. <laughs> or he may say to someone there, you haven't died yet, but you have already become an animal. Then he instructs another person to step on the first person's tail. He has no tail there, but that person would feel like he... He has a tail and has been stepped on. So suddenly, the first person cannot stand up. <laughs> be, be stepped on the illusionary, imaginary, or magically uh, constructed tail. Yeah? I, I explained that. Buddha didn't say that. He just says, suddenly, that person cannot stand up. At that point, all the assembly pour out their hearts in respect and admiration for him. If someone has a thought, the demon detects it immediately, and he establishes intense ascetic practices that exceed the Buddha's moral precepts. He makes uh, that person even more ascetic than normal, than a standard even set by Buddha. And the Buddha precept is already very, 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 very austere, believe me. Very austere, yeah? If you know the Bhikshu precept, you, you say, oh, okay, I'd rather be a lay person. It's very difficult to keep all their precepts. And here, this possessed demon, make them even uh, more sacrifice. Make the listener, the believer, to be more ascetic than that, okay? So to make you stay in the cold where there is empty room, that is a kind of, maybe, <laughs> this kind of demon. This is too over ascetic, okay? No need, no need. If you have a house, you stay in the house. If you have a car, you drive a car. <laughs> you don't try to make yourself deprived from all these uh, modern facility to to make your life more comfortable and easy and save more time. To forsake a car and walk everywhere, even in rain and shine weather for far away to go to work, may be good for your ego or other people who praise you. But that's not the way you should do. That won't make you a Buddha, okay? <laughs> to be modest and simple means you use what you have, not trying to look holy by being too over ascetic especially if you're not a monk or nun or anything, okay? You got to work. You need to eat good. <laughs> you need to dress well, otherwise you don't get a job. Huh? You need to drive a car so that you go to work on time. Nah? You need to protect yourself by the car or bus or train in the weather element so that you stay strong and fit. You take care of your family. Yeah? Do your job well so that you can earn the living for your family. There's no need to prove anything, okay? If you can afford a car, get a car. <laughs> if you can drive, drive it, okay? Yeah. If you don't dress well, you might not be able to get a good job that you want, even though you have the ability. But people look at outside, okay? Outside appearance. Even many country, some country nowadays, they have some non-profit organization to lend a suit or give a suit, yeah? Or a dress for the people who are looking for a job, yeah? even young looking people, but sometimes young looking people just get out of college or something, had no money to buy a good decent suit. They give them to go look for a job and they have success because of good looking suits. <laughs> yeah, you can say he's just a suit, but <laughs> the suit does work. Or the good dress, you know, have them to do hair and all that. This is a very good idea. And so we praise them on our Supreme Master television. Very good. You see that? Your master knows everything, <laughs> even the suit. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs>
my God, I preach about Buddha Sutra, you don't clap. I'm just saying I'm good and then you clap. <laughs> it's okay, very good, very good, thank you. Okay, that's very good. We never know when uh, we can have the chance to listen again to this kind of sutra. So I'll talk to you until you have to leave <laughs> in the morning, maybe. Huh? So whoever stay in that assembly of this demon-possessed person, they are not even think of anything because he will know immediately. Yeah, and he will point out, oh, you suspect me, you no good, you unworthy. So they don't dare do anything. Everybody listen. Even one or two person, a little bit more intelligent or wiser, think of something. Maybe this person is not a true monk or true bodhisattva. Then he knows right away because he's a ghost. Yeah, he has this power to know people's mind and he can control it as well. That is a problem. Hmm? And then uh, he make everybody that listen to him, follow more ascetism than the Buddha's rules, exceed it even, yeah? And then uh, he slanders bhikshus, mean monks, yeah? He scolds his assembly of disciples and exposes people, private affairs, without fear of ridicule or rejection. He is fond of foretelling calamities and auspicious events. And when they come to pass, he is not wrong in the slightest. Uh, he knows the future also. Oh my God. Or maybe he make the, the calamity to fit his prediction. Because he's so powerful. He corrupt anything he wants. My God. It's so difficult to, to, dis, to discern between a ghost and a Buddha or a, a saint. Because the saint normally, they don't even use any power. They don't predict much. And people come and ask him, oh, will I die tomorrow? He said, I don't know. <laughs> or oh, will my mother uh, recover or something? Says, no, master would say, okay, okay. I will hula up and she'll be okay. No, normally not. But these kind of demons, he can predict even future big events. Or maybe he just make a hard work to prove that he is correct. So this is a ghost with great powers that in his old age has become a demon. You know why he old and become a demon? As is a promotion from the ghost. <laughs> why is that when he's old he became a demon? Anybody know? No? Okay. I pretend that I know something. You believe it or not, it's, it's another thing. Even a ghost, they also yearn to have more power. And they meditate in their own way. Even fox, uh, you know, and other animals, you know, some even vicious animals, snakes and all that, they practice in their own way. And then they become ghosts or demons or, you know, evil with more power. And they can live longer, many thousand years sometimes, or hundred years, hundreds of years, and then they have power, and then they can transform themselves sometimes into human and uh, deceive people for some purposes. And some even become human so that he, he or she can uh, marry in that person. And that person has no clue that his wife or his, uh, husband is a ghost or a fox uh, transformed into human. And when the husband or wife not home or went outside of other humans, they became fox and snakes, because they cannot continue using their power. They have to recuperate. So they just, you know, hide and seek like that. And nobody has any clue. In some of Vietnamese uh, folklore story, they have some story like that, that some, some snake, you know, uh, uh, transform herself into beautiful, person and come there and take care of one of the student, you know, and then feed him and take care of him. Like she can, as if she has money, she's just pretending to do some work, weaving or something, but actually she used a magical power <laughs> to obtain food and all kind of necessity. And the husband was very comfortable to study, but slowly he get more and more weak, weaker because 
the snake power may be sucking some of his uh, uh, human energy out of him. And then some of the shaman people has to cure him. But then some, sometimes the, the husband don't want it because he's so much in love and in debt with his so-called wife. He say, never mind, I, I accept her and I continue to stay with her no matter what. Because I consider many humans are even more vicious than this snake. Yeah, she didn't do it on purpose. Maybe her energy is not compatible with mine, so I'm weakened. Or maybe it's just my time that I get sick. I don't want to kill her. Because that shaman say, if you want to stay alive and well, you must kill the snake. I know how. and He know how to kill her. Because ordinary people cannot kill her. If, if you chop her head, you grow more, for example, like that. But the husband did not have the heart to do it. In some story like that. He say that uh, some humans are more poisonous than this snake. This is also true, huh? <laughs> Whether or not he's because of in love with a, his a snake wife or not, he, what he said is true also. Some humans are more poisonous even. Yeah? <sighs> okay. So this is a ghost with great powers that in his old age has become a demon, you know, right? He, he become older and he's so-called practice, bear more fruit, so he become <laughs> promoted <laughs> into demon state. But by no means he's benevolent or anything good. They ghosts and demons, they just bored. They have too much power, so they just have to exercise it some, some way, somewhere, good or bad. That's a problem when you have so-called magical power, you cannot avoid using it. So you must be careful. That's why I say no magical power, nothing. Mm. Just practice Kuaning method. Earn your own merit in heaven. Earn your place by your own work, okay? No rely on magical power, nothing. Mm. So of course, this goes disturb and, and, and confuse people. But after he's tired of this game, probably go seek another person somewhere to possess. And then, uh, and then both the so-called disciples and teacher will get into trouble with the law. You should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will find the real and the self. You know that, okay? Further, there's still more. <laughs> My God, Buddha, how many ghosts did you pick out? Oh, so many. Okay. I mark it up to here, you know. That's as far as I had studied. I mean, recently, just to check out what I should read to you. But behind there, I suspect, <laughs> there, oh, there's more, <laughs> a lot more, okay? Yeah, maybe no ghosts, but uh, some false view can make you trouble. Okay, so further in the unhindered clarity and wonder that ensues after the feeling scandal is gone, this good person is in trouble and he's in perfect bright concentration, and, but within samadhi his mind, his mind craves more, more knowledge and understanding. So he diligently toys at examining and probing as he greedily seeks to know past lives. Even just to want to know past lives, you'll be in trouble too. You know nothing, know nothing. There's one uh, master in Korea a long time ago. He's a monk. Huh? He don't teach much to his disciple. He say, whatever happened or turbulence go into your mind, you just say, don't know. <laughs> whatever your question, just say, don't know. You answer yourself, don't know. Just two words he tells his disciple, don't know. <laughs> Anything, any trouble, just go straight, don't know. <laughs> he wants to break all of the train of thoughts of his disciples which is also maybe helpful, yeah? But don't just, don't know anything, all right? You, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know you should be good. Eh? Keep precept, meditate, yeah. Eat vegan. <laughs> At that time, because he wanted to know past life, he eagerly, you know, so greedily and very urgently and uh, fanatically want to know the past lives. At that time, a demon from heavens sees the opportunity it has been waiting for. Okay, here Buddha always say heavens instead of heaven. 
Okay, I just sum them up in one heaven. Because in heavens, there are heavens of 33, meaning there are 33 department separate heavens. Yeah, and one of the king called Sakra, he's troublesome. He always make trouble for the practitioners. Yeah, he's worried about losing his power and his girls up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he has so many girls around. Maybe they don't have uh, physical desire or anything, or maybe not physical contact or anything, but maybe they satisfy in a different way, you know, still some kind of uh, desires and pleasure. Mm. As I told you, in the astral world, there was 120 plus level mm, of different kind, and there are a level of hells, level of heaven, so-called heavens, yes. But they always seek trouble with the, the next heavens. <laughs> they fight sometimes. The Buddha sometimes uh, had reincarnated as the kings of heaven. Yeah. And he sometimes had to lead his armies to go fight against the Asura. Yeah. Imagine heaven still fighting. So how would we, the human, now have peace? It's a miracle, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not a miracle? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it is. Thank you, all of whoever helps. Thank you. So at that time, a demon of heavens sees maybe one of the 33 heavens uh, citizens or one of the astral heavenly citizens, okay? They are not saintly people. They are not just heavenly beings. They are troublemakers. Too much power, nothing to do, <laughs> no goals, yeah? No Buddha had taught them, just demon teaching them, so they follow the way of demon, okay? That's why they don't know anything more. They're just going to cause trouble and using their power for fun. Yeah. Okay. So he sees the opportunity it has been waiting for, it's for fun, you know what I mean? Making trouble for fun, they like that. His spirit possesses another person and uses him as a mouthpiece to expel the sutras and the teachings of the Buddhas, I guess. Yeah? This person, unaware that he is possessed by a demon, claims he has reached unsurpassed nirvana. When he comes to see that good person who seeks knowledge, he arranges a seat and explains the teaching. There in the assembly, Inexplicably, that person may obtain an enormous, precious pearl, you know, just suddenly a pearl manifests in his hand, something like that, or something else manifests, an object, uh, just from nowhere. Uh, like the precious pearl just appeared to him. He obtained it just like that. So the demon may sometimes change into an animal that holds the pearl or other jewels, bamboo tablets, talis, talismans, letters, and other unusual things in his mouth. The demon first gives the object to the person and afterwards possesses him. Or he may fool his audience by burying the object underground and then saying that a moonlight pearl is illuminating the place. You know, like he already hide the pearl or something, use his power to manifest the pearl and bury it under the ground and then, the, and then make that illuminate the whole place where he is speaking. Thereupon the audience feels they have obtained something unique, never seen before. Of course, suddenly the whole uh, place is shining like that. They've never seen that. So, or he may eat only medicinal herbs and not partake of any prepared normal food. Kind of what? Breatharian or <laughs> Mediterranean <laughs> medicine? <laughs> yeah. Or he may eat only the sesame seed and one grain of wheat a day and still look robust. Robust. Phew. Hmm? You, some of you want to eat this kind, want to have this power. I know. Stop it. Be normal. Mm. <laughs> eat when you're hungry. Sleep when you're tired. Meditate while you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Try, okay? Try to keep awake. But don't override your body, okay? You need it to continue further. Because if you uh, ex exert too much power from the 
a limited human body, then you might collapse, okay? Middle way, huh? Middle way. Mm. And that is because he is sustained by the power of the demon. Yeah. See? Demon can make you also footless, sleepless. <laughs> yeah? Mm. He slanders bhikkhus, mean monks, real monks, and scolds his assembly without fear of ridicule or rejection. Mean for no reason, just slander the bhikkhu and the, the, as well as the so-called people, the audience, with no reason. He is uh, fond of talking about treasure troughs in other locations or of remote hidden places where sages and worthies of the Ten Directions dwell. Liar. Those who follow him often see strange and unusual people just lying. And he just manifests these kinds of things to make people believe in him. This is a ghost or spirit of the mountain forest. Man, just a small ghost like that. <laughs> just a mountain forest ghost. Or earth, or cities, rivers, and mountains that in his old age has become a demon. The person it, it possesses may advocate promiscuity and violate the Buddha's precepts. He may covertly indulge in the five desires with his followers as well. Or he may appear to be vigorous, eating only wild plants. His behavior is erratic, and he disturbs and confuses the good person, you know, the one who meditates and wants more knowledge. What did he want? What does that person want? Yeah, seek more knowledge, yeah. Worldly knowledge or knowledge of alchemy? Yeah, or maybe knowledge of how to turn uh, trees into people, people into trees. Uh, those kind of magic power knowledge, yeah, it's not good. But when the demons are tired of his game, he left the person's body, then both the so-called disciple and teacher will fall into trouble with the law. You should be aware of this in advance and not get caught up in the cycle of transmigration. If you are confused and do not understand, you will fall into the relentless hells. All right, okay. We stop here, huh? Mm. I think uh, we're done for today. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who had taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. So, at least the Buddha make it clear for us not to be so proud of our little achievements and just continue keeping humble, pure, yeah? and a moral person. <sighs> All right. Ich muss gehen. I, I have to go. That's German. <laughs> Simple that I have to go. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I love you, Master. Thank you. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Then you can Thank you somebody. for the retreat message. You lose some fun with it, okay? I have to go and see uh, people upstairs. How are you? Very good. So okay, ma? Okay. 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 Okay.
，这样对了，嗯、啊，这样对了，师傅也很高兴快乐啊。有时候有一点点那个障碍一点，不过没关系啦，我们还是一路走的哈。过过来照顾，感恩哥，感恩哥，女亚嘎 ，OK， 感恩哥，啊，他很有爱心啊、uh, ，She was very very kind， yeah very kind， and she one person very old and she look after until he become good again and become also your brother， 啊、huh? ， so。I just want to give you something. <laughs> it's not much. It's just souvenir. Okay, so you remember, continue to be good. 我们那个路嘛，有时候开车也好，走路也好，有时候都会有一点那个，比方说一块小石头啊，是什么的，没关系的。I say our road sometimes have maybe a little pebble on the road or some little. A uh, tree falling down, but we just move it and then we continue going. Yeah, because we want to reach our home. Same, same when we practice, a little obstructions, no problem. Yeah, continue. Everything is good. We have to keep the positive mind. Yeah, <laughs> and everything will be better. Always remember Buddha, God, blessing from heavens. Then everything will be okay, yeah. Okay. Um, I was thinking I come just to say hello and I go, but <laughs> so many people. Thank you for coming, huh? Thank you. Okay, huh? Thank you for coming, and thank you for putting up with the not very uh, comfortable and not very uh, favorable situation. Huh? Thank you for all of you. Heaven is touched by your sincerity. Even heaven and earth know your purity and good heart. And I'm also very, very touched and appreciative of your dedication to the noble goal, the best goal, the only goal that's important in your life. Practicing. Mm -hmm. I thank you very much for being such good people. Thank you, thank you. We young or old already know what we have in this world already, but something else beyond the world we do not know yet. So we are learning. Yeah, we're learning so that we can have more awaken our power. Our self power inside, so that we can uplift our spirit, go through all the trouble, and also bless the world with our positive energy, with our holy intention, our blessing transmitted from heaven. We carry on. We carry it in our being. So wherever we go, the world people benefit with our positive thinking, positive energy. And brilliant light and love from higher dimension than the world dimension. The world dimension we know already. Even from Sichuan, from Mongolia, we can come here. We can know Taiwan. Uh, from Europe, from America, we can all come here to see Taiwan or go see Europe, see France, see England, or whatever, Korea. But we don't know anything else behind this. So this is what we want to learn. We have Buddha power inside. We have heaven inside. And this power, we develop more and more. We remember more. We have it already. Just more remember by meditation. Then we can bless the world. More peace. Yeah, We have more peace now than before. Yeah, Korean peace. Yeah. Uh, Ethiopia, Eritrea, peace. Um, Syria is coming to peace. Uh, Colombia, peace. Uh, what other? And then yesterday, the day before, Ye Yemen, peace. You see, one, 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 keep coming. All the peace because we practice and we bless the world with our sincerity.
no matter what we believe, what we do, in a peaceful country is always good, right? Yeah. yeah. If no peace, cannot do much. No peace always is a worry, you know? We worry a bomb and gun and uh, oppression. So it's better to have peace all the time, anywhere. No peace cannot meditate also, yeah? Worry too much, right? So peace is good, good, good. And peace coming, coming, coming now. <laughs> I'm very happy. Are you happy? Yeah. Good. Right, thank you. So continue practicing so we have more peace, yeah? More goodness, more compassion, more love between each other, between humans and animals and trees and plants and all beings in the world who, is, who are also helping us to elevate as well. Without the trees, without the ocean, we don't have oxygen, we cannot breathe, right? Cannot breathe. So, cannot breathe, cannot meditate, cannot live, cannot survive, cannot eat, cannot drink. So, we have to thank all of them. And the more we practice, the more we understand more, and we understand and we appreciate everything on this planet. They are all helping us. So, we also try now to protect them. We protect the trees, protect the animals, even the fish, yeah, and protect the planet the river, the ocean, so everything have helped us. So we have oxygen, we have food. Yeah, the earth gives us nutrition for the food. The sun, the air we breathe has been clean for us. The tree give us oxygen. The rivers give us water. The river, the lake, the rain give us water. And the ocean bring us also 50% oxygen. So we have to now in turn protect them. Yeah. The animals are helping us, yeah, the trees are helping us. Now we must protect them now. They have been protecting us all these hundreds, thousands of years. So we and our children, our father, mother, relative, friend can live and breathe and survive. And now they are in danger because of humans' pollution and not caring for the planet. So we must help them now. We, we are vegan. It's very big help. We also tell others to be vegan, to protect all living beings on this planet so that we can continue to, to live. Also, we return their kindness, yeah, in gratitude. Also, we uh, thank you for our children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, because we have to protect the planet, the trees, the ocean, the river, not just for us, not for our children, our children, great-grandchildren, but because we learn now to be more compassionate, more loving and kind to all beings. And that is the only way we should be as human, a noble being, a protectors of the weak and the helpless, like animals and trees and plants. Understand, yeah? Yes. Mm. Okay, thank you, and good night. <laughs> Who has to go home must go home, because at home you have work, yeah? You have work waiting for you. You have wives, you have husband, children, uh, father, mother to take care. And you also need to meditate well, but you cannot neglect your duty, yeah? The parents need you. The children need you, a husband, wife need you. If you must go, if you have obligation, you should go, okay? If you're free financially and family-wise, you can stay as long as the visa, okay. Yeah. If you stay longer, then you are not good citizen. You make trouble for the government and for our, our group, okay? We must keep also our reputation. Huh? Mm. All right, I wish you a safe home, trip if you're going home, yeah? If you are not going home, I see you tomorrow in Sihu, okay?
مشاهدينا الكرام نقدر حضوركم حلقة اليوم بعنوان سورنجاما سوترا الحالات الشيطانية لسكاند العقل الجزء الثامن من ثمانية ضمن سلسلة بين المعلمة والتلاميذ التالي مقتطفات من سر الفيدا لسري أوربيندو الفصل الثالث عشر الفجر والحقيقة الجزء اثنان من اثنين على كلمات من الحكمة مباشرة عقب الإخبار الجديرة بالذكر رجاء أن أبقوا معنا لمتابعة المزيد من البرامج الإيجابية عسى أن تكافئكم السماء على أفعالكم الخيرة Cherished viewers, we appreciate your company for today's episode entitled The Surangama Sutra, The Demonic State of the Thinking Skandhas, Part 8 of 8, on Between Master and Disciples. Coming up next is Selection from The Secret of the Vida by Siri Aurobindo, Chapter 13, Down and the Truth, Part 2 of 2. On words of wisdom, right after noteworthy news, please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May heaven reward your quiet good deeds. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.